Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I, uh, got stuck behind a tractor, which someone in chat totally called, so good job on that. <laughs> hello, hi. Um, we got Italian food last night, and, uh, we ordered enough that they just, like, gave us a pizza. So I folded that up, and I'm eating it. Because... <laughs> Because I didn't have time to eat a thing. Free pizza. Oh my god, never normal. That's a very cute idea. They said, hear me out. I saw on a stream redeeming channel points to hug the mods. If that doesn't scream this stream, I don't know what does. That seems very much our vibe, yeah. Got my coffee, the pizza. We're good to to go. DIY calzone. Yeah, I was trying to explain to Clark what a calzone was yesterday, because <laughs> that's what Sam got from this place. I was like, it's kind of like if you took a pizza, you made a whole pizza, and then you slapped it in half, and then you baked it. And then when she saw what it looked like, she was like, eh. <laughs> You know, fair enough. <laughs> oh no, Pepper Blanket, I'm sorry. I hope you don't have too many like rough symptoms. I'm just gonna eat a couple more bites of this and let people filter in and then and then we can get going and try this game out because I'm very curious about it. Also, I, <laughs> I didn't finish the schedule. I'm falling apart. <laughs> I'll do it after stream. Yeah, King of the Castle is like um it's a it's a Twitch integration game where you can also just play it with friends, but um the idea is that one person is like the monarch of, you know, a place. And then either Twitch chat or your friends or however you play it, they vote on how good of a monarch they think you are or like um make votes based on how they feel about your decisions and stuff apparently um it looks like it could be really fun and they sent me an early copy of it because it's coming out in january i think so really early copy um so i thought that would be fun for us to try game of thrones in chat yeah i think it would be really fun to do like a, a mixture Potentially, if the game is really fun, I think it would be it would be interesting to do like, because um, the implication is that the people who are voting on stuff are, uh, you know, like your council or like the 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 dukes and duchesses and etc. 
I think it would be fun to play it where like one person can be the monarch and then you can have like other streamer friends be, you know, part of your council, but then have Twitch chat also do something, you know? No, I don't think, no, I don't, maybe I'm not pitching this right. I don't think that this is like a, um, I don't know that I see the votes necessarily. I think I'm trying to keep from being like executed. <laughs> like, I think if I do enough shitty stuff, you guys can vote that like I shouldn't be the ruler anymore, right? This isn't like you're all taking nice ballot votes <laughs> and, I, and then I'll be like, oh, they don't like it when I, uh... what are those called? The <laughs> cancel the king. Stocks? Stocks. I'll put everybody in stocks and they'll like me. Stockades, yes, there we go, thank you. It worked in Cult of the Lamb. It did, oddly enough. Yeah, it worked really well in Cult of the Lamb. <laughs> mm hmm. All right. Let's open this up. Let's see what this game looks like. <laughs> I love collusion. Um, I don't know how loud this is going to be. I'm going to open it and try to turn it down ahead of time. <clears throat> Nice. Ah! I agree. Welcome to King of the Castle. King of the Castle is a social storytelling game you play with either your Twitch stream or with your friends via the browser. You play the monarch of a fantasy kingdom. Go the fuck away. Play the mon- <laughs> Ah! Get out of here! I'm about to lose my goddamn mind. Where are all of you coming from? Now you show up? When I'm trying to read shit? God damn. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> you play the monarch of a fantasy kingdom, playing through events, making decisions. Players can join your game as nobles on the council who come from one of three regions. Nobles can vote on certain decisions and scheme to usurp you. You must survive and get your heir onto the throne. Customize your monarch so that your reign has personal flair and start a new dynasty. Click your twink Twitch account to have your custom noble appear in browser and Twitch games. Great. <clears throat> oh my god. This is cute. Join a Twitch streamer's game as your own unique, customized noble. As a premium player, your character will guest star more often in Monarch storylines. We only use the minimum permissions needed to verify your identity. That's fun. I love when they're creative about Twitch integration. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're linked. Customization. Yes! Let's make my noble! As a heads up, if you want to join with preferred pronouns, type exclamation point join pronoun. Oh, nice. Let's take my earring. 
things off. Beep. Okay. Oh my gosh. Do I make them? Do I try to make them look like me? I've been kind of into that lately, like making myself in games. I never used to do that. Oh my god, an eye patch. It's tight as hell. No. on right now. I'll take them off. No glasses. I'm pretty white, dude. <clears throat> Where them bumpy noses at? Where them bumpy noses at? What? I love that. Okay, sorry. When do I get to do my hair? Oh, down there. Avatar. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> I'm very excited. Okay, so these are the hairstyles. That's more what I've got going on right now. <laughs> nah. Masks, I want a mask. Cute. Wait, do the outfits? What? Wait, is different per region? Hmm. today. We'll go with that. Wait, okay. The capital. I mean, can I just... Hmm. Can I just port this over? <laughs> The others are when you're not the monarch. I know, but like... Dynasty. Dugger. Dynasty name. Wait, is this like. Uh oh. <laughs> My dynasty name. You know, just because.
Oh, players who have bought the game are, are premium. I see. Regent selection. Pepsi Dini, Ah, Bob, Bubalini, Atrapacha, Liberacha, I love you. Oh, we picked three. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Join with exclamation point join followed by your pronoun. For example, exclamation point join she. Let's go. Excited. I think this is going to be a shit show. Else? Oh, 30? Okay, let's go. Okay, primer. <clears throat> the monarch primer. To win, acquire an heir. Complete your ambition before the regions complete their schemes. Keep an eye on your regions' schemes. If they pass all their steps, they will win the game. Be careful of the regions' defiance stat. If it gets too high, the regions may rebel against you. The nobles. To win, pass all three steps of your scheme. Each aim will need you will need you get stats to need you to get stats to certain levels, which are affected in votes. How you vote is up to you for your region's scheme to stop other schemes or for the good of the kingdom. If your defiant stat is high enough, you can rebel. This pauses your scheme and is risky, especially if you have a low military. Y'all ready to do some scheming? Each season you'll get three events. Click on one to get started. Oh my gosh, okay. Um, my coronation. They'll appear in most stories, but not all. These are kingdom stats. If any of them are zero at the end of your turn, the monarch loses the game. These are region stats. Um, the kingdom stats and these determine what events are generated. If defiance is high enough, a region can rebel against the kingdom. This is risky. You can see a full list of the nobles in your game here. Okay. Your majesty, I've scheduled your coronation to take place in a week's time. Why the hurry? To delay any longer would cause the nobles to start getting restless. And when nobles get restless, they take their daggers and look for the nearest back. Jesus, chancellor. We wouldn't want that, I suppose. As is tradition, the council will decide what happens at your coronation. But it's my coronation! This isn't an absolute monarchy, your majesty. Everything has to be run past a council vote, even this. Shall we call the nobles in? 
Certain choices will change stats. Some choices that do so will indicate this change here. Not all choices that change stats have these indicators. You'll also know what region they affect until after. Uh, you'll also not know what region they affect until after the choice. These are the upcoming choices your nobles will vote on. Each of these may change stats in some way. The monarch has the power to change how the vote is run by using a law. You may use one law per season. Try vetoing one option you dislike from the vote choices above. When the vote opens, nobles vote on which choice they want by using the command exclamation point vote followed by the vote letter. <clears throat> the monarch may close the vote when the timer hits zero or when 75% of the nobles have voted. Okay, so I can, I can get rid of something. Seed with a religious ceremony. Throw the queen in the river! Outdated traditions. There's no need for a coronation at all. I will get rid of this one. Can I? Monarch can mark their, uh, can take a voting option off. Yeah, I want to veto something. I want to veto this. And I can mark my preferred, or no, I can just do one. Okay, start the vote. I know what you're all gonna choose, just do it. Throw me in the river! Do it! Voting has closed. 42 nobles voted to throw the queen in the river. <laughs> this shows what stats have been changed by this choice and how much by. Okay. The queen will be thrown in the river. Stability is now civil. Authority is now dubious. Let me get changed out of my nice robes. The nobles pick you up and carry you to the Treadwater River, hurling you in the shallow water with a cheer. When you climb back up the banks, soaking wet, the chancellor steps forward and places the crown on your head. Is it your imagination or are some of the nobles stifling giggles? Okay. Now that you're the queen, your first duty is to meet with the Council of Nobles. Your nobles hail from all across the kingdom, the desolate east, the wealthy coast, and of course, the bleak march. An honor to finally make your acquaintance, your grace. Oh, <laughs> may you escape the doom that befell your predecessor. Oh my goodness. Uh, I hope to see our kingdom prosper and grow wealthy under your reign. Thank you very much. Hail and well met your majesty under your leadership. We'll whip this kingdom into shape. Bottom left is the designated webcam spot. It does look like that, doesn't it? Hold on. But, but my webcam though, but my cam though. I don't know how I feel about flipping it. That feels weird. <laughs> I don't like that, but I'll do it. <laughs> You sigh and sit back. Is this what the council is like? No wonder your father told you to avoid the throne at all costs. The monarch must adopt or sire an heir, then complete their ambition to win the game. A spouse is useful, but not necessary. Complete your ambition before the schemes or the rebellion usurp you. The first few years of your reign are the most difficult. You're new and unproven. The nobles of the council will scheme against you, hoping to kick you off the throne and put their own puppet Clément in your place. Um, They couldn't scheme their way out of a paper bag, stares at chat. Better queens than you have been toppled by their treacherous nobles, your majesty. To defeat their schemes, you must secure an heir and prove that you were worthy of the crown by completing an ambition. When you die, how do you hope the kingdom will remember you? Hmm. As a peacekeeper, I'll say. An admirable aim. I suggest over the next few years you focus on improving the kingdom's stability as much as possible. 
Once you have an heir, I'll return to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Good luck, Your Majesty. End of the season. Each region will now vote for one of three scheme options. Schemes are made up of three steps, each requiring the region to change the stats to pass. Passing all three scheme steps places the region's successor on the throne, winning the game. Fellow patricians of the coast, my claim to the throne is far more legitimate than that of Queen Duger. I can't believe this. Something must be done. This is only open to g greeny beanies. Only green team right now. <clears throat> someone said they were in a, another chat while someone was playing this game and everybody who was uh, a noble changed their username color so, <laughs> so that they were the color of their team, which is cute. How do I know what I am? Um, let's see. On the greens. If you see your name, you are green and you should be voting. Only 75% of the green nobles have voted. <laughs> I'm slowly scrolling through them. That's everybody on Team Green. If you saw yourself and you have not voted yet, please do. You can see what team you are on the map. I'm showing off the purples. And then the reds. There's the first line of reds. Second line of reds. <clears throat> Call that done. Eighty-one percent of the green nobles voted. We'll call that a win. Raise your own trade is what y'all have decided to do. The patricians plan to privatize this entire damn kingdom. First, they must build up their industry. To advance their scheme, the patricians must raise their trade to five or more in four seasons. Team Purple, my fellow counts. In ancient times, the East was its own proud kingdom. We can bring back those days of glory, but not while the false Queen Duger wears the crown. Voting is now open to Team Purple. What scheme should the Counts pursue to overthrow the new Queen? I'm gonna try to fix this stupid thingy. A <laughs> blood ritual. Don't knock it till you tried it. Get the fuck out of here, buggy. I swear to God. I'm about to lose my goddamn mind. Okay, that looks better. <clears throat> Maybe the 
Bug wants a vote, then he should have typed exclamation point join. Oh my god, I can't believe how many of you are voting for blood ritual. Okay, uh... Can we get 80% of Team Purple to vote on this? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. <laughs> you can join during the game. Oh my god, you can. Because that went down to 76%. Oh shit, here we go. All right. You can. You can join the game while it's already going. Hey, that's pretty tight. Voting has closed. Blood ritual is what you all have decided to do. The Count's plan to summon an ancient famine demon that will devastate the other regions, paving a clear path to the throne. First, they must ensure the East can withstand a famine. To advance their schemes, the Count's must be the region with the highest farming in Four Seasons. Holy shit. Time for the Barons. When have the barons of the march backed down from a fight? Never! I know you'll do whatever it takes to put me, your rightful queen, on the throne. All right, Team Red. What scheme should the barons pursue to overthrow the new queen? Yeah, this is much more split than the other two have been. Oh my god. Cats, please do not fight right there. <laughs> this is not the time or the place. Is there social media in this kingdom? <laughs> Just cancel the queen. It'll be easy. Sherlock abandoned ship. Good call, Sherlock. Okay, well. Lower the military it is. The barons plan to modernize the kingdom's army in such a way that it is totally under their control. But first, they must prove the military is in need of reform. To advance their scheme, the barons must lower the other region's military to a combined total of eight or less in four seasons. The devs are working on a solution to check what team you're on mid-game. Yeah, I was about to say, like, that, that seems like something they should definitely add before the game launches. You can review the region's successors and their schemes. When you have an heir, they will appear on the right of this page. If your reign ends abruptly, the nobles will vote for the next monarch. This vote will be between the two regions with the highest stats and your heir, if you have one. Interesting. Okay. Okay. End the season. New season, dude. Ah, a theft! Wait, surely there's also something for... For the perps? No? No purple stuff? Okay, let's see what this is. Now that you're queen, you need personal protection. I could plunge my sword into your heart right now! I'd like to see you try! Is it your imagination or does your marshal stifle a wry chuckle? In any case, she quickly hides it. You need an honor guard to keep you safe from such dangers, your majesty. Unfortunately, this is a political decision. 
What are my options? Each region offers a selection of elite guards. The Counts with Knights of the Order of the Drowned Rose, the Patricians with Champion Gladiators from the Arena, and the Barons offer a squad of battle-hardened veteran soldiers. Think carefully, Your Majesty, these guards' loyalties will be divided between you and their region. Of course, you could just hire foreign mercenaries. They would be loyal to coin above all. Hmm. I'm surprised I can't be like, I want a little bit of everybody. <laughs> Something about the Eastern Knights. The Order of the Drowned Rose are highly respectable. They'll understand palace etiquette, but it's been years since they fought an actual battle. They mostly write poems. Tell me about the coastal gladiators. A gang, sorry, a gang of low-born crooks who have turned themselves into celebrities through their skill at chopping other people up to bits. They're vain and selfish. Their skill in battle is undeniable, but can you trust them? Tell me about the veterans of the march. These soldiers have fought more battles than they've had hot dinners. They'll be uncouth, no doubt, and won't adapt well to life in the palace, but they're loyal and tough as nails. What foreign mercenaries do you suggest? There's a band of fearsome fighters from the Tatterlands who call themselves the Battle Bitten Brethren. They specialize in bodyguard work, but they're costly. Hiring foreigners will be considered an insult to the other regions. Hmm. I'm trying to go for stability. You know? I'm trying to go for stability here. That's my that's my ambition. Is is to be known for like not fighting a lot so maybe like the best way to do that is is to take the eastern knights because they're like yeah we're we'll protect you but they're not like super like battle hungry you know oh yes sorry there you go I will make the arrangements at once. <clears throat> the knights arrive a few weeks later. They are all extremely pale and extremely polite. The commander introduces herself with a florid bow before reading out a poem she's written for the occasion. Amazing. We barons will remember this. <laughs> okay, let's see. What's going on on the coast? Your Majesty, there's a petitioner here to see you today. We're not exactly sure where she's from. What does she want? You'll see her. You'll see soon enough. Greetings. My, I love your outfit. My name is Orid. I have a position proposition for you. Uh, where are you from? Distant shores, Your Majesty. I prefer to keep my exact origins a secret. Tell me more about your proposition. The three ships are docked in a harbor to the west. Their holds are packed to the gills with muskets and gunpowder. They each boast a full battery of cannons. They're all yours in return for a small favor. Muskets, the small furry animals. What is this favor? I only wish to stay in this kingdom with your blessing and protection. I can show your soldiers how to use the weapons, of course, to avoid any accidents. What'd you do, buddy? I don't know what you mean, your majesty. I simply wish to keep my dealings private. You'll forgive me, I hope. Uh... I will select my preferred, which is to say, no, thank you. Start a vote. Everyone can vote on this. We don't know where all that stuff's from. We don't know who those ships belonged to. It's too dicey. I don't know who she is or what she's done. Nah. I don't want to get involved. <laughs> or it is cute, but yeah. Yeah. How do I say I love your fit, but no thank you? <laughs> Muskets or buskets? <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it's funny to say. Okay, we'll see if we can hit 80% of nobles voting. 
Any of you who have joined, who have done exclamation point join in chat today, you are able to vote on this. So if you have not voted yet, Now's the time. I wish the streamer could vote separately so we weren't influenced so much. I mean, I, I think that the hope, right, is that like, that's why each group has their own goals and ambitions, right? So even if I say like, this is what I would like to do, or this is, this is an option I would like to veto, um, at the end of the day, like somebody, one of the people who's in the Baron group from Team Red, if you will, in chat was like, no way do we want you to have those weapons because we want the biggest military, right? Because that's our goal. So, um, you know, the hope is that everybody's thinking about what their goals are and trying to work toward those things, regardless of what I say my preference is, you know? We're close. We're close to 80%. Yeah, I also I think that that's also true, right? Is it's meant to be a, a social a social deduction kind of game in some ways. And depending on the person, they might choose the opposite of what I want. Once I say, like, this is what I'd like to do, they might be like, well, fuck that then, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. Well done. 80% of you voted. I'm very proud. Goodbye. Knowing that taking her in will no doubt provoke someone's ire, you turn or eat away. To your surprise, she doesn't beg or grovel, but bows low and leaves your courtroom with dignity. Nice. Okay, one more event. Your Highness, this is an outrage. I demand justice. Plasma Phoenix. Listen, I forgot that everybody's gonna be named after someone in chat. Last week, Cont Melscooper shook my hand as a supposed show of reconciliation and stole my family's lucky ring. Seventh, take us. Nonsense, rummage through your drawers and I'm sure you'll find the thing. Your Highness, a feud has stood between our families for centuries. Mel Scooper's ancestor left my ancestor tied to a rock in the woods for wolves to consume. That's because his ancestor poisoned our well and killed half our household. Enough! I know Mel Scooper stole my priceless ring. It brings the march great luck and bounty and my dear niece is to wear it when she marries. Oh my god. Send the Chancellor to the east to investigate. Arrest Mel Scooper immediately. Leave the squabbling nobles to deal with the situation themselves. Oh, I see. I can only... Interesting. Okay. Then I will veto something. Um, I Not this. <laughs> it's very obviously showing favoritism if I just arrest someone without looking into it at all. Okay. So, do we send the Chancellor out to investigate what's going on? Or... Do we just leave the nobles to do what they want? My preference would be A, because we lose a lot of stability with C. But it's up to you. Your call, dudes. We got some rogue perps. <laughs> oh, shit. It's the long con. Why so many perps voting against us? <laughs> yes, fight amongst yourselves. Yes. Da, 
Is there a way to see like what each group wants? Somebody was saying like I don't I don't know what our goals are. You can see a noble list, but is it the check marks? Do the go away. Do the check marks show you like what they want? Why do the patricians have three check marks? <laughs> what y'all doing? <laughs> Hmm. Well, voting tied. I will s select this then. Plasma Phoenix thanks you profusely. The counts are furious that the accusations are being taken seriously. Go to the Chancellor to search Mel Scooper's home for this special ring. Me, I do enjoy tales about such mysteries. I shall do my best. Oh. Be safe, Chancellor. Okay, we end the season. Nobles can use their wealth to bid for buildings, which change stats. This is done through an auction where only the top two most funded buildings are made. When the auction is open, nobles can fund with the following command. Exclamation point fund AX, where X is personal wealth. Oh, that's why all of you have money. When you're ready, hit the start vote to begin the auction. Interesting. Okay. Okay, ready? Where X is the character code and Y is the amount you're pledging. Okay, so it'll be like exclamation point fund C 1000. That sort of a thing, I think. Okay. Do y'all have an idea of what it is you're buying? Remember your goals. Start funding. This is fun. It's like, it's way more involved than I thought it was going to be. <gasps> Time's up, who got what? <gasps> okay. Well done, guys. <clears throat> Finding a spouse. Oh, God. Here, let's do this instead. <laughs> Your Majesty, I found Baron Plasma Phoenix's ring, but the situation is delicate. Ooh, this continues. This is fun. Count Mel Scooper's niece has it because Plasma Phoenix's niece proposed to her with it. My guardian, Mel Scooper, doesn't understand true love. My dear Juliet and I are meant to be together, feud or no. All we want is a quiet life, a little garden, a flock of geese, 20 acres of land. No one knows about the romance yet, but tensions are high. Both regions are using the feud to fuel a full-on rivalry between barons and counts. Perhaps I'm soft-hearted, but I can't help feeling for this young couple. Is there a way we can resolve this peacefully? Oh, shit. Provide a dowry to soothe the noble's feelings on the matter. Publicly bless the couple's union. Publicly forbid the romance. Ooh. Publicly bless the couple's union would be so spicy. It, it says that they'll just, everybody will be mad about that, but stability will go up and so will farming. Provide a dowry. We'll lose money, but I haven't spent money on anything yet. We'll provide a dowry. We'll try and like keep the peace here. When the announcement is made that the queen formally blesses the upcoming marriage of Juliet and Metze, the cash soothes their guardian's feelings. 
As wedding preparations begin, the story of the love-struck couple catches the imagination of the marcher peasants who work together to make a huge cornucopia as a wedding gift. Nice! Okay, bounty hunters. Your Majesty, these good folk are bounty hunters representing the Republic of Kurth. Queen Duger, we greet you humbly. How may I help you? We're searching for someone, a fugitive. You might say, last we heard she went by the name Orid. Uh, yeah, she came through here. Will you help us apprehend her? There is no doubt she is still in your kingdom. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm, well, no, I'm not gonna, because I don't know, I don't know how finding a spouse is gonna go, so. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave this alone. You guys can decide. You all just want to know what she did. <laughs> You're all like, what'd she do, though? What's she up to? <laughs> Leave her alone! Leave Brittany alone! <laughs> oh, goodness. We'll try to wait until 80% have voted, like usual. <clears throat> Why would a queen assist a random bounty hunter? I think the idea is like, we don't know what she did. I wish one of the options was like press to find out what she did. Um, and maybe it was, and I just wasn't paying attention to my options when I was having a conversation with him. But like, uh, the idea I think is like, you have somebody potentially dangerous who's in your kingdom. Are you gonna do something about it or not, you know? Okay, we'll call that good. Assist the bounty hunters. You pledge to help bring Ori to justice. The bounty hunters wait eagerly for your agents and their investigation to bear fruit. God. Okay, here we go. In the twisty passages of your castle, you can avoid your advisors, the nobles, even the spy master, but there's one person you can't avoid. Your mother! Why haven't you found a spouse yet? It's been almost a year. Is it really that urgent? Of course, don't worry. I'll take the liberty of finding eligible candidates. What's your preference? Men, women, do not mind? I don't give a shit. Excellent. I'll send out messengers to the most influential noble families in the kingdom. Let's see what they have to offer. Oh no. <laughs> It'll continue. Okay. Uh, okay, end of the season. Collect taxes, either from a region or a standard tax. Taxing a specific region will take wealth from the nobles and increase their region's defiance. Oh geez. I mean... Taxation effects. Defiance goes up. Add to the treasury. The Baron sold a weapon cachet to the Tatterlands, making a killing. 500 wealth. The other nobles gained 200. You can take a small tax from the kingdom's commoners or tax one region's nobles. Oh, I see. So I can, like, pick one of these or I can just do this. The latter will raise defiance and take personal wealth from the nobles of that specific region. Okay. The reds are too rich? That ain't my business. <laughs> That's none of my business. Hi, Jimmy! I got to, uh, 
I got to send your channel to a friend the other day. Because they're interested in doing, um, well, potentially interested in doing, like, builds and paints and stuff on Twitch. And I was like, I know people who do that. So I sent them your channel. Hi. What's up? It is your business, your highness. They're using... <laughs> Thank you for saying your highness. It is your business, your highness. They use that money to build an army. But I don't know that. I'm just like, man, they're so enterprising. They're working so hard. <laughs> we would never fund an army, promise. <laughs> Plus one RP. Oh no, your majesty. That couple from the march and the east are here to speak to the council. Your majesty, you've brought us so much joy. I can't believe I finally get to be with my dear Metze. But it's not all good. We wanted to get married and start a farm together. Enjoy some peace and quiet for a change. All we need is each other and a few adorable animals. And the wedding would be tiny. Three or four hundred people at most. But of course, Plasma Phoenix and Mel Scooper refuse to give us anything. Classic Plasma Phoenix and Mel Scooper. <laughs> Please, your highness, help us once more. Oh my god. The couple should forge their own path. That's what I think. I'll say I'll I'll say what I think should happen here. And then y'all can do what you want. Uh, for anybody who's uh, just now showing up or has shown up in the middle of this, you can join one of these groups mid-play. If you would like to, you can do exclamation point join and then a space. And if you want to designate your pronouns, it would be like exclamation point join space she. You know, she, he, they are the options. Um, if you don't designate anything, it automatically makes you they. Uh, and you will join one of three, um, above me, one of, one of three different, uh, it's not factions, but different, um, areas of the kingdom that all have their own goals and are working to complete those goals. Um, and I am, I am the monarch. I am the current queen. So if I fuck up enough, you guys can overthrow me. <laughs> Is there a rule on which group you're assigned to? No, they try to keep it even. So they'll just add people one at a time to each group so that the groups are like close to the same number of people. Yeah, the game is meant to be coming out in January. Um, they've sent it out to some influencers to play it because it's, it's basically done. But there are some things I guess that people have been suggesting, which I totally agree with. Like people can't check which region they're in mid game. <laughs> so a way to check what region you're in would be really helpful. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. If you own the game and you have it linked to your Twitch, uh, it will, it will try to use the people who own the game more often in storylines. Cause it, it will just like pick random people from regions to use in stories. But if you own the game, you're considered like, you're, you're kind of like at the top of the list sort of a thing. Um, but obviously the game isn't out yet. So <laughs> that, that is neither here nor there. <laughs> I 
So these stats, these will affect the kingdom at large. Yeah, which I think is why so many greens were like, I don't give a shit. Let the couple do whatever they want. And neither of them are part of our region, you know, so. Uh, okay. We'll call that good. Couple should forge their own path. Okay, so this is a byproduct now. The Oh no, the East is mad at me. Few nobles want their relatives to become hum humble farmers, especially if it's because of a whirlwind romance with someone of a rival lineage. Neither the barons nor the counts are happy. The patricians welcome them eagerly, even giving them some scrubby land to live on. It turns out that the lovers have a knack for wilderness life, helped along by the lucky ring. They quickly cultivate a thriving farm that brings prosperity to the area. Oh shit! Helped out the greens, dude! Julia and Metze even named their first child after the queen. Little Duker grows up peacefully in the country, far away from the feuding families. Aw, a happy ending for them. That's sweet. Uh, oh no, I don't want to do that yet. <laughs> Avoiding marriage at all costs. <laughs> Your Majesty, good to see you again. We wish to thank you for the information you provided. It was instrumental in tracking down Oried and bringing her to justice. As a token of Kurth goodwill, we'd like to share a portion of the reward. Um, tell them there's no need for reward. Justice is enough. The bounty hunters are taken aback by your charity. They thank you gracious, gratuitously on the way out, promising you will have the eternal goodwill of the Republic of Kurth. Hell yeah! Your nobles are also surprised by your lack of greed, but respect the integrity and confidence that it shows a foreign power. I don't need your money or your guns. So... <laughs> I am a gog. All right. I found three potential matches for you. One eligible young candidate from each of the kingdom's three regions. Oh no, choose wisely. You'll be securing a powerful alliance. Our mom looks so tired. <laughs> She looks so over it. She's so tired. Okay. Uh, what if I don't want to marry any of them? That's a decision that can wait until after you've seen them. Okay. Your mother leads you to the great hall where she's arranged three portraits on easels. I didn't even get to meet them. There's no time for sentiment. You need a match that befits your station. Oh, God damn it. She whisks away the cloth from the first portrait. This is Zemuel, the eldest son of the Eastern something dynasty. Apparently they had a hell of a time getting him to smile for this portrait. See that beautiful fur coat he's wearing in the portrait. Wolf Pelt hunted it himself. He did have to suppress a peasant revolt on his land recently. I wonder why. Don't see what all the fuss is about. From the coast, we have Dimitri, the wealthy heir to Lord Patrician Conrar's estate. I mean, just look at them. They're gorgeous, and apparently they've got a silver tongue. Their interests are typical of the coast. Money, 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 and making more of it, and they're scarily good at it. Okay. Finally, we have the March's Offering. Gloria, scion of the prestigious Norman bloodline. A typical baroness, really. Loud, brash, and self-absorbed, but mostly well-meaning. Like most of the barons, her great passion is hunting. No beast is safe from her crossbow. Give her half a chance, she'll expound at length on how we should improve a lot of the peasants. Uh, she seems like the best option. She's really into hunting, but I can fix her. <laughs> what do you think? Of course, by picking a candidate, you'll anger the other regions, but you'll gain a lifelong alliance. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've made my decision. Which of them do you want to marry? Gloria. Excellent, I'll start making the arrangements. <laughs> the East is now insolent. <laughs> They're so mad. Everybody's so mad at me. Okay. Uh, but our stability's pretty good. Here you can adopt a new law that can alter how voting works. You can only adopt one new law at a time and have a maximum of three laws. Uh, okay. 
Monarch can mark their preferred voting option, and if chosen, they gain authority. That's kind of nice. After voting. Oh, these are these are laws that I have. Oh, interesting. Okay. After voting, nobles can change their minds and vote for a different option. How nobles choose to vote is hidden from the monarch's view. That's kind of fun, but that also means you guys can't see it. I kind of like that. Okay, a jousting tournament. Let's go. Uh, your majesty, the barons of the march have invited you to a jousting tournament. How delightfully rustic. Um, I'll compete myself. We're doing good. The barons, they love me. <laughs> Chancellor smiles thinly. Superb, your majesty. I'll send your acceptance. Uh, okay. Noble patrician Maxville 26 is here to see you, your majesty. They want to sell you a crab. Of course they do. It's the latest trend along the coast, your majesty. The patricians have started keeping a species of jeweled crab as a fashionable pet. Apparently the creatures are so rare, one can now sell for as much as a mansion. Okay. Thank you for seeing me, your majesty. I know the price is steep, but I assure you these crabs will only go up in value. Oh, so the patricians will gain a bunch of money. Please buy from us. <laughs> Don't you want our crabs? It's an investment opportunity. <laughs> oh my God. Crabs, honestly, what's this kingdom coming to? A crab MLM. All right. Your wedding to Gloria is naturally the talk of the kingdom. Nobles and peasants alike travel from across the realm to attend. For a week and a day, the capital is one giant party. Feels like you're the only one not taking part. Instead, you're getting ready for the ceremony. Soon enough, you're standing in St. Bertrand's Cathedral with Gloria at your side. Do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. I pronounce you queen and wife. After the wedding, of course, there's a feast. After the feast, a dance. Your new wife, Gloria, dances so vigorously she spills wine all over herself. What a beast. Um, stability is now peaceful. Authority is now credible. <laughs> Finally. Um, everybody's defiance went down as well. Thank God. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. By the time you find yourself alone with Gloria, it's past midnight and you've never felt more tired. I'm so drunk and yet somehow not drunk enough. Time for more wine. How are you so full of energy? You sound just like my mom. She's been asking that question since I was five years old and swinging from the chandelier. Uh, what do you like to do in your spare time? Nothing beats the romance of the hunt. Roaming <laughs> the great outdoors, searching for my prey. What did you think of the wedding? It was beautiful from start to finish. I had a whale of a time. Aw. No time like the present. She swigs back the last dregs of her wine and leads you to bed. Yay! We're married. My mom will get off my back now. In a dingy seaside tavern, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. The coast's enemy has never been better. Economy. <laughs> enemy. The coast's economy has never been better. We're making more money than I know what to do with. You know what they say, money breeds money. I've made a new series of investments that should improve our profits even more. What are we going to do with the rest of this gold? The coast trade is now opulent. Time to start buying things, of course. Land, roads, bridges. We're going to buy up the whole kingdom piece by piece, but first the queen needs to be in desperate need of gold. To advance their scheme, the patricians must lower the treasury to 1,500 or less in two seasons. Late at night, two counts meet in an ancient stone cemetery to discuss their schemes against the queen. 
Our grain stores are looking much more impressive than the rest of the kingdom. Yes, and I've had peasants from the march moving into my lands, desperate to sponge off our prosperity. Most pleasant. Won't summoning this demon be difficult? It's magic beyond our usual fare. The walls of reality are sturdy, but they can be weakened. A tide of blood must swallow this kingdom in its wake. Chaos! For the next stage of their scheme. The counts must lower stability to four or less in two seasons. Good fucking luck. Good fucking luck. Do you see this shit? I'm doing good. <laughs> Amidst dark and foreboding forests, a small squat castle stands watch over the marcher border. There, at the end of the kingdom, a plot is hatching. The kingdom's militaries are in shambles. Those pathetic weaklings couldn't fight their way through a field of rabbits. I've drafted the reform proposals as planned. Now that we are dominant, the council will be more than happy to follow our lead. Good, but we must ensure that they don't get skittish. The kingdom must be stable for our proposal to work. Grand, a calm before the storm. For the next stage of the barren scheme, they must raise stability to five or more in two seasons. I got you, barons. Yo, the barons and I? Doing good. Doing good, everybody. The baron bias continues. <laughs> Oh my god. You gotta destabilize, dude. You gotta destabilize. <laughs> okay. For everybody who is curious. Ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the green list. You are on team green if you see your name. Oh, Marian wanted to be purple so bad. You're part of the coast. Okay. You are on team purple. You're a creepy count. If you see your name in the purple list, I will slowly go through it. <clears throat> it's hard to read on mobile. Uh, yeah, I can't make it any bigger. God damn it, game. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the purple list. Um, some people in chat have been changing their name color in chat to reflect uh, which region they are from, if you would like to do that, if you see your name and would like to change your color. Now we're going through the Barons, Team Red. Ready? Here we go. Second part of the list. Third part of the list. Fourth part of the list. And the last. Can you go through the green really fast one last time? Okay. Really fast. Ready? One, two, three. 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 That's it. All right, we're leaving. Ready, set, go. Okay. 
All right. <clears throat> Beach whale. What's this about? Your esteemed highness, a great big whale washed up on the coast right outside my villa. However, before I could order my servants to harvest its blubber, a fin folk crawled up onto the sand. It begged me for an audience with the queen. Fin folk? Your question is answered when a frog-faced, green-skinned man waddles in, his flippers slapping against the marble. That's me. Sweats. I'm a married woman. <laughs> Your Majesty, you must not allow Lady Patrician Queen's Rider to kill Visku. Visku is a wise and gentle whale, a great friend of the Finn folk. Uh, why should I listen to you? Because I'm begging. Visku has done nothing to you. Please return her to the waters where she was born. Or, hear me out, Your Serene Highness, we could strip down the whale to its component parts and make a fortune. Who cares what these fish-faced fools think? I mean, we should return the whale. <laughs> I'm going to veto slaughtering the whale. <laughs> we should we should give we should put the whale back. the money but the whale think about how much your wife would like the trophy my wife gets plenty of trophies all on her own dude i haven't seen her in weeks <laughs> all she does is hunt Yeah, this isn't a hunt. They found this on the beach. My wife would be like, what, you couldn't hop on a boat and kill one yourself, coward? <laughs> By the ninth, I can't believe this. How could you take the fishmen's side over your own citizens? Thank you, your majesty. The fin folk owe you a great debt. Nice. Using a crane and a team of oxen, the great whale is lifted and placed upon wooden rollers. Without ceremony, it's plopped back in the ocean where it splashes its tail and sprays water in gratitude. From that point on, coastal fishermen report that their catches have nearly doubled. How about that? How about that? greens <laughs> apparently the grateful fin folk have been literally herding fish toward their nets we don't need farming i don't even like fish <laughs> the barons have assembled upon a jousting field watching from tall stands the place is buzzing with excitement a servant straps on your armor and helps you mount your horse. She hands you your lance and you ride out into the field. I forgot about this. Welcome one and all. We have a thrilling guest today. As you ride your horse past the stands, nobles gasp and stare. Blow a kiss at a baron? I'm married. <laughs> I wave. Cheering erupts. The nobles stamp so hard the stands tremble. When the jousting starts, you quickly realize your opponents swerve each time they approach. They don't want to hurt a queen. Puts a dent in the challenge, really. Some choices have uncertain outcomes. These are called challenges. These can either be random or based on a stat. The percentage value shows the chance of success. Ooh. Make the most of your advantage. Disguise yourself to get a real match or withdraw and watch instead. Wait, what? I can't tell if this means that stability will go up. I want a real match. 
A new competitor is about to join us. She comes from, uh... <laughs> no. My wife's, my wife's from the march, so... <laughs> Your entourage helps you into a new set of armor and you ride out onto the field. And here we have, what was the name? Baroness Yvette, ready for a fight. Finally, a real battle. <laughs> you throw him from your horse flat on your back. Blood courses through your veins. The audience roars in support, cheering wildly for Baroness Yvette. Is this what it's like to be truly admired? At the end of the day, you make your way back to the capital, feeling every ache and muscles you didn't know you had. But what a rush. The March of Cavalry troops see a huge influx of people eager to join, inspired by your example. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's what y'all want, isn't it? The Reds, they want a big military. You're welcome. <laughs> How do you expect me to take this seriously? Crack-brained simpleton. Whoa. Shut your daft mouth and give me what I'm owed, you honorless dog. What in the seven hells is going on? This pimple-headed lackwit expects me to pay him a huge quantity of gold just because his great-great-grandfather beat my great-great-grandfather in a foot race. A debt owed is a debt owed, is it not? Your Serene Highness, I only recently discovered this debt while combing through my ancestor's journal. Honor dictates that Count Niflesix is liable for his ancestor's debt. By the blood of the dead, this is ludicrous. I demand we put this to a vote. Oh my god. Here. Vote on it anonymously. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I was also really curious how the the vote anonymously law worked. <gasps> well, that, well, that doesn't work. <laughs> well, that's something that we need to fix. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. You don't see names. Yeah, but I think part of the allure of it being anonymous is you can't see what your faction is doing. Right? So it plays into whether or not your faction is unified in what they're doing. Cancel the debt. How delightful. Glad the council sees reason on this matter. A debt is a debt. Does nobody care about honor anymore? Y'all are really mad about the fish thing. End of the season. Time to fund. <laughs> Take a moment and figure out what you would like to buy, guys. So, um, yeah, for anybody who wasn't here for this, uh, if you are in the game as a noble, you have money. Uh, when an auction happens, all of these things, um, you can, uh, I don't think bet is the right word, but like, you didn't start, yeah, I know, you're figuring out what you want to buy, correct? I'm letting you guys talk about what you want to buy first. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, you can all like decide what you want to put your money into, depending on what your goals are. So as a reminder, currently, uh, the counts want stability down. The barons want stability up. And uh, 
the patricians want the treasury to go up. Okay, ready, steady, go. You have 30 seconds. guys. <sighs> Let's do this first. Congratulations are in order. The royal wedding was a magnificent affair. Um, I'm very happy. Thanks, mom. Your happiness isn't as important as fulfill- Mom, take a nap, dude. You've done well so far, but something is still missing an heir. You need someone young whose loyalty is assured who you can mold into your own image. A child of your own would do the trick, even if they're a bastard or the youngest of your many cousins. Jeez. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a bastard child lying around somewhere. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> please say that. It is pretty good. Um... I'm gonna adopt. The nobles won't be happy with a lowborn child being elevated to the status of a royal. I urge you to reconsider. My mind is made up, mom. History will remember you as a champion of the people if it remembers you at all. I'll make the necessary arrangements. Thanks, mom. Weird that Gloria didn't get a uh, say in this. <laughs> I feel like Gloria should have been there for that conversation. But okay. Your Highness, the Barons of the March plan to have the Council push through a number of military reforms. For the good of the Kingdom, they say. But the reforms are designed to consolidate marcher control over our ranks. What can I do? The Barons are waiting for a period of stability that will allow them to pass the necessary amendments while everyone's guard is down. Unless there are some drastic developments within the next few months, I predict the Barons will be proposing these military reforms very, very soon. Because they're Barons. You bring the revelations which the Barons wholeheartedly deny to the Council. Again, I feel like Gloria is not going to be super jazzed about what I do here, but, um, you know, I'm the queen and if there's anything that I should be good at, it's like just putting roadblocks in the way of progress, right? So, that's my choice. Accuse the barons of treason! No! <laughs> Oh my god, one of the barons said to do that. I love that one baron voted for that. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> that one. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. It's, Gl it's Gloria. Gloria's like, what the fuck are they doing out there? Oh my god. Baron's really showing up for this vote, dude. <sighs> this is conspiracy. <laughs> All right, I think we're I think we're pretty uh, set. Voting is closed. 
The council chamber erupts into shouts and insults. Accusations, formal and informal, circulate throughout the kingdom, shocking everyone. Good thing our defiance was at zero, huh, guys? Stability is now united. Authority is now imperious. Peasants in the march and beyond protest the reforms. Derisive cartoons are posted on tavern notice boards while priests warn against trusting the self-serving barons and their wicked ways. You can only hope it will be enough to delay the reforms. <clears throat> All right, your majesty, it's come to my attention that across the kingdom there are all manner of roads, bridges, walls, canals, and what do they all have in common? Uh, most of them are crumbling. The upkeep costs an arm and a leg, am I right? And yet they make you no money. I'm willing to take them off your hands, saving you the cost of upkeep, and pay you handsomely in return. Ask your treasurer. It makes perfect financial sense. What do you make of it, treasurer? The treasury is not exactly looking healthy. This would be a welcome cash injection. <clears throat> Don't you guys want... Do you guys want the cash to be high or low? I just can't work out why the patricians would be this helpful. It's suspicious. Perhaps we should call a council vote. They want it low. Okay. Mm -mm. Stability would go down but the treasury would go up. I think they want it below 1500, which it already is. So they're already like successful. The baron, the barons and the patricians are both already successful at their second stage. As it is currently. <clears throat> Go on, then. <laughs> Watching people in chat lose their minds at each other. I do think it is confusing which one helps out the patricians, though. I, I think A is what the patricians want. We don't want A because it raises the treasury. But either way, you guys were offering to pay me. The treasury was going to go up no matter what.
I think what I think what got confusing here is this event goes against what the patricians in general want as their goal, their current goal. So like this event is someone from the coast coming and being like, "Hey, we can like you know, we can govern all of these different things, charge tolls and then give you money." But in terms of like end game goal victory shit, the patricians don't want us to have money. So they wound up being split in this in this vote. <clears throat> I think that's why I wound up being confusing. My lawyers will have something to say about this, and they do. The new decree is bogged down with legal challenges. After months of agonizing courtroom antics, it is declared unconstitutional. You weren't aware the kingdom even had a constitution, but you suppose it must do. The council doesn't seem interested in trying to pass a law a second time. You've delayed the patrician scheme. Their stat goal will not be evaluated for another two seasons. Sorry, guys. Pair of counts face each other in silence. A code word is exchanged. They speak of their latest schemes. What happened? The kingdom was meant to be a whirlpool of chaos by now. More like a whirlpool of smiles and hugs. No demon will come anywhere near it. The count's aim is to lower stability to four or less. After several rounds of deliberations, the council approves wide-ranging reforms to the kingdom's standing armies. The barons of the march are set to be the major contributors to the new model army, having volunteered their expertise and manpower in these trying times. The barons' newfound position of authority brings riches to the march, merchants seeking to sell arms, mercenaries seeking employment, and even young peasants looking to defend their kingdom. Meanwhile, in a foreboding marcher fortress, the barons are celebrating. I can hardly believe they went for it. This is all well and good, but we haven't won yet. We must make our fi final preparations before we take control. Oh, how should the barons use their new model army to take control of the kingdom? Only barons can vote on this. <clears throat> I can't believe this. Come on, man. My wife is a baron. <laughs> Oof. Y'all just gonna march on me, huh? That's the plan. Seems pretty cut and dry. We have a plan of attack, but one last thing remains, defense. For our final march on the capital, we'll need a sizable home garrison to repel opportunistic attacks from other regions. For the final stage of their scheme, the barons must raise their military to at least 10. <laughs> Already at nine, fuck my life. Should I just tax the shit out of the barons? Just cause I'm salty. <laughs> Tax the greens, we need to stop that. That's true, God, why do they have so much money? I need money. Count sold unused tracts of land to the Adventurers Guild for 500 wealth. The other nobles gained 200. You didn't tax the Reds before when they had more money? Uh, well, the Reds are about to march on me. <laughs> the Reds are about to march on me and end the game. So um, I'm trying to figure out what the best thing to do here is. season. The crab bubble bursts. The mystery night. 
As you walk the corridors, your spy master falls into step beside you. She hands you a wooden carving of a figure astride a horse. I hear a mysterious knight called Baroness Yvette made quite the impression during the last jousting season in the march. No one knows who she is. The barons want to sell these figures and commercialize the enigmatic jouster. It would bring a great deal of money to the area. <clears throat> Reveal that the mystery knight is you? Wait, I'm misunderstanding. I would love to sponsor her, but then I'm playing into patrician hands. <laughs> I know I did, but at the time that they said the name, I thought that Baroness Yvette is who I fought against. I thought Baroness Yvette was the one who, who knocked me down, not me. It was me? Oh. I will dramatically reveal that the mystery knight is me. Yeah! You make your big announcement with incredible pomp, putting out a proclamation that the mysterious knight was none other than you! For a moment, the barons seem annoyed you pretended to be one of them, but instead, excitement explodes. As the story spreads, you become more popular than ever. Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about, baby! Hi, Tofu Senshi! I hope you had a good stream. We love it. We love it. I'm most pleased with the new fortress we built on my land, but the soldiers believe the fortress is cursed. Desertions are at an all-time high among those garrisoned here. That's inconvenient. Unfortunately, nobody can tell me why they think it's cursed. They just say it gives them a creepy feel feeling. What should we do? Paint puppies and clowns all over the fortress? What? Order the soldiers to stop complaining. Raise the fortress to the ground? What? Uh. <laughs> We're gonna do an anonymous vote. While you're voting on that, I'm gonna go make sure Sam's awake. One second.
how do we do? <laughs> what? <laughs> We're burning it down? <laughs> Better safe than sorry, you order the creepy fortress burned to the ground. Oh my god. Whatever horrific secrets that place was hiding, they've been reduced to ashes now. It's haunted. Burn it. Burn it down. Bad news, your majesty. A new reef has been discovered, which is overflowing with millions of jeweled crabs. Crab prices are crashing catastrophically. What? <laughs> the entire kingdom will suffer financially, your majesty, with the exception of a few patricians. Curiously, noble patrician Maxville 26, the very same patrician who first began the crab craze, recently sold all their crabs at a huge profit just days before the crash. Some patrician wealth has decreased. Noble patrician Maxville 26's wealth has increased. Some baron wealth has decreased. Some count wealth has decreased. Okay, something must be done. You summon your council to discuss crab price crisis. <laughs> Um, many assembled nobles have invested heavily in the crab market, and they are casting furious glances at the patricians' benches. <sighs> what should be done to help the coast recover from the imploding crab market? I'm fine with either, to be honest. I can't do the top one, so go for it. Stability is going to go down, though. Voting has closed. Arrest Maxville 26. I feel very <laughs> attacked. <laughs> Maxville, you shouldn't have tried to play the stock market. You, sh you shouldn't have done this weird crab shit, dude. The coast is now furious with me. Oh my god, it went from four to seven. Holy shit. Stability is steady. The treasury is now very high. Big fan of that. Outraged. Patricians protest that your actions are illegal and make a mockery of the law. Don't they know you're the queen? <laughs> End the season, I guess. Sitting on a bench outside a sun-bleached villa, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. The thrice-cursed queen is still refusing to sell us any public land. It makes sense. The treasury's flush with coin right now. Patience, my friend. Let's bide our time until the queen's gold runs out. The patrician's aim is to lower the treasury to 1,500 or less. New law. Monarch can vote. Their preferred voting option if chosen, they gain authority. If nobles vote for the monarch's choice, they gain 10 personal wealth. After voting, nobles can change their mind and vote for a different option. Hmm. I do like bribery. <laughs> Please choose one of the current laws to replace. Oh. Um anonymous voting hasn't really done much for us, so. Pushing for change. Comet sighting. A taxing issue. Can we see... How do we see... Um, we should be able to see... Uh, the... 
the thing that shows like each group's goal and what stage they're on and stuff. Your Majesty, help us. Lord Patrician, Mr. No of the Coast has been bleeding us dry. Not literally, I hope. I'm making use of a common idiom, my liege. Our taxes are 10 times higher than they've ever been. I can't afford to feed my cows. It's true, Your Majesty. Lord Patrician, Mr. No has been taxing his peasants at least twice as much as the next highest noble. It's been a hard year, Your August Majesty. I have barely any gold in my vault. I'm just doing what I can to stay afloat. What about this poor peasant's cows? A pox on the cows. Let's see what the council thinks of this. Uh <clears throat> Will another green noble go to jail? <laughs> seconds. See if we can get to at least 50% of nobles voting. Greens voting on A, confusing. It's because they want my money to go down. That's their current goal, is for our treasury to go down. But, but the well, wait, it won't take my money though. It would say treasury when it takes my money or gives me money. So that is confusing. Hmm, interesting. By the ninth, tax collection has been our duty since the days of old. Why should the rest of us be punished because of Lord Patrician Mr. No's mistakes? Wow, they really hate me. The royal tax collector proves to be diligent and efficient, but the patricians are outraged at the implication that they can't be trusted. Uh-oh. Their defiance is at nine, dude. <laughs> Oof. Blood red comet was spotted in the night sky over the march, your majesty. The commoners are claiming it's a terrible omen. The common folk are on the verge of panic. Is there anything I can do? Faith? Um, this is not the barons. Uh, I'll give it a shot. Failed! You deliver a speech reassuring the peasants of the march that the comment isn't a good or a bad thing. It's just a thing. Probably the ninth god riding a chariot or whatever. Unfortunately, the peasants don't believe a word of it and your reassurances seem only to panic them further. For a few weeks, the march is gripped by panic. Riots break out in the streets. Soothsayers wander the land foretelling doom. Whoops. <laughs> oh no, chaos in the march? That sucks so much. I'm so sorry about that. After a particularly long session at council, Gloria comes to find you in the chambers. Gadzooks! I love Gloria. <laughs> we made the right choice. Gadzooks, how do you deal with all that talking? When will they do something decisive? I know exactly what you mean, babe. I was thinking, what if we did something to make things better? I want to plant a forest in the march. It'll bring so many animals to the area. Imagine the hunts. It'll help with training the troops, too. But Gloria, I don't want your military to go up. How do you tell Bay that you love her, but you don't love her region very much right now <laughs> for love? <laughs> I do love my wife. <laughs> A great idea, Gloria. Oh my god, and my treasury will go down 2,000. Hmm. 
We need to be careful with our budget. We can't afford more. We'll have to squeeze out as much as we can. She kisses your cheek before hurrying out to enact her plans. Okay. Gloria's still happy with me. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> okay. End of the season. Here's where you're all at. These upstarts are saying they have a right to your throne. No doubt the nobles are already scheming to crown their region's preferred claimant. Okay. The barons of the march are on their last goal, which is why we're working so hard to make sure they don't get a 10 in military. Um, our biggest concern right now, I feel like, is uh, if the patrician defiance hits 10, I think that they can try to overthrow me. So... <sighs> Stability has been going down, so, you know, maybe I sh should have bit my tongue there. Uh, but that's what you guys want, is the stability to go down. Y'all want the treasury to go down. It's pretty high right now, though. And uh, they just want a big military. The rebellion report? One or more of the regions will soon be able to rebel. If the rebels get more victory points than the loyalists, they will win the game. If the loyalists get more victory points than the rebels, they'll put down the rebellion and continue. If other regions join the rebellion, the game will end with a successor vote between the two most powerful rebelling regions. Rebelling regions have their schemes paused, putting them at a disadvantage. Rebellions will likely be put down easily if the rebels don't have a high military. <laughs> well, that's good. Y'all's military is pretty shitty. Oh my gosh. Um, cannot start a rebellion. Cannot start a rebellion on the verge of rebellion. Okay. Six percent have rebelled. Oh my god. <laughs> No! My heir. Quick, I need an heir. Very quickly. Your quest for an heir is finally complete. You stand before the council holding a small child in your arms. Should I die, I ask my crown be passed down to... The council hall is filled with nervous silence. My adopted lowborn son, my adopted lowborn daughter, my adopted lowborn child. It doesn't matter either way. Silence continues, accepting a few stifled coughs. After the awkward pause is stretched out to over a minute, there's finally sporadic applause. The nobles don't appreciate you inducting a lowborn child into the royal family, but whether they like it or not, by designating an heir, you've cemented the stability of the kingdom. The coast is now at a 10. Your grace, may I be the first to congratulate you on adopting an heir? What is their name? Duker the second, obviously. Most pleasing, your highness. I'm sure little Duker the second will grow up to be a chip off the old block. How the crab's doing? After months of delay, noble patrician Maxville 26 is finally due to stand trial for their crab-related market manipulation. You stand accused of perpetuating fraud and tricking hundreds into buying expensive crabs. How do you plead? I'm guilty only of making money. I broke a few longs, laws along the way. Is that a crime? Obviously. I pronounce you guilty as charged and your fate will be decided by the queen. <sighs> you guys are already pissed at me. I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> Imprison him. He's dragged away in chains, wailing for clemency. Most of the watching nobles agree that justice has been done, except the patricians, of course. Please, your majesty, Maxwell 26 has young children. Who's supposed to pay for the upkeep of their villa? Well, it's a little late to say that now, isn't it? Your wife Gloria is busy reading her letters when she gasps! Hell's bells! What in the world is she up to? Duger, the eastern workers have laid down their tools. No one's working anymore on the forestry project, and Countess Androlian is doing nothing to help. We'll figure this out, babe. Letter doesn't say what's going on. Why did this happen? Uh, let's invite them here to explain. Greetings, your majesty. Queen Consort Gloria. 
What's happened with your workers? The forest should be halfway to plant it by now. I told the peasants to down tools because, lamentably, the chosen land just isn't suited to forestry. I don't see the trees surviving long. Oh, great God, I had no idea. Why do why why does it all help the military? <sighs> what am I going to do? You gotta stop the project. But my wife! <laughs> but my wife! She's gonna be so sad. I wish that I could tell like where the military's gonna go. It's in the it's in the it's in the reds, but obviously the people that were The people that are that are doing all of this are the counts. So maybe let's plant elsewhere. We'll give military somewhere else. Oh my god. Let's plant elsewhere. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! God Gloria, <laughs> god damn it, I'm blinded by love. <laughs> I'm so mad. No! <laughs> Everyone's military went up. Why? Be because we, made, we planted a forest and everyone's military goes up? Fuck. It has to, I'll do my best. And she does. Soon the planting begins in earnest in a more suitable part of anti-forest noble territory. The people there and beyond are delighted with your wife's achievement, sending showers of letters and gifts to the palace. Furious. <laughs> God damn it. Go on then. Buy your shit. Continue to the rebellion report. <clears throat> Desertion, no. You see, your highness, that is why we must ensure that taxes are collected in regular intervals. If we were to, your highness, I have urgent news. I hear that every day. This is very urgent, dire even. The new model army has deserted us. Not only have they marshaled without my orders, they refuse to stand down. New model army, what's that? The reorganized, revitalized troops that were supposed to be the kingdom's world-class fighting force, trained soldiers and high-grade equipment. We went to their inauguration parade together. Your wife said they looked like a shiny porcupine with all their bikes and polished plate metal. I'm sure this is just a miscommunication. I don't share your optimism. Without a military, we will struggle to hold on to power. If I may interject, this is almost certainly the work of the barons. If I were to offer any advice, it would be to seek a treaty. This new model army, which I suspect takes orders directly from the march, cannot be beaten by any force on this continent. We made sure of that. Can't you do something sneaky? Assassinate some people? The Barons united and in full control of the military, I can do nothing to stop them. Then it's over. The only strategy is to minimize losses. We can negotiate a favorable surrender. You stalk out of the room, unwilling to hear more. Later that evening, you're joined by Gloria in the bedchamber. Judging by the look on her face, she's already heard the news. You have to believe me, I had no idea. Those treasonous swine, I never thought they had it in them. 
She pats you on the back. <laughs> Babe, I'm so sorry. <laughs> pat, pat. Thanks, Gloria. A few minutes of silence passed. Despite everything, it's still hard to believe that your reign might be about to end. If anything happens to me, look out for Duger the second. I will. Don't worry about that. Will you try and talk to them? They might let you live if you're willing to abdicate. Let's run away together. Let's run away together. Why not? It'll be a long holiday. Let's go to Kurth, Sal, Ashmead. You hired a captain and left the kingdom before the week's end, striking out across the ghost sea to Elrusia. You won't be a queen for the rest of your life. At least you and Gloria will have a life together somewhere. You can only hope that the Baron's assassins will never catch up to you. The Barons are victorious. I ran off with my wife and Duger the <laughs> second. The kingdom in shambles. <laughs> Hoping to make history for reasons other than her birthright, Queen Duger took it upon her life of took up the life of a wandering adventurer in distant Valamir, but that's a story for another time. The patricians attempted to buy the kingdom and in failure. Bankruptcies were filed, marks were scratched in secret ledgers. The risk-reward calculus wasn't favorable, perhaps next time. Rushing to complete the scheme, the counts attempted their blood ritual too early. The summoned demon escaped their control and slaughtered dozens, including Delvira and Countess Jerry Rig. <laughs> Marching to the Baron's orders, the new model army effortlessly took the palace and installed Vulrika as queen. The military reforms soon fell apart, destroyed by corruption and nepotism, while the new queen would have proved harder to control than the barons hoped. Queen Duger, the modernizer. Didn't even put up a fight, rolled over and gave up. The game was literally like, you have no military. And I had already established myself as a wife guy. I literally like <laughs> created a situation where you guys could win because I felt bad saying no to my wife. So you know what? <laughs> so you know what? A wife guy to the end. <laughs> I ran off with my wife and my weird baby. You were the wife guy king. I was. <laughs> How are you, Ock, though? The wealthiest noble was Mel Scooper. The poorest noble was Monster 864. My authority was two at the end because I skipped town. <laughs> Honest, like the patricians had such good stats. If you guys had managed to like try to overthrow before the barons got their military. You might have done okay, but your military was pretty small, I guess. Ah, rip. You didn't buy our crabs. I didn't. Thank God. You may now continue a game. Completed games will create new saves where you can continue the story of your dynasty. So if I hit continue game, will I be Duger the second? Yeah, well, I think like, I don't know exactly how it works this way. I think you'll be Ulrika. I guess maybe. We wanted that blood ritual too much. Fair. Yeah, let's just see what happens when you hit continue. We can always hop out and start a new dynasty, but... You're right, yeah. Interesting, okay. No, let's start a new dynasty, dude. I want different clothes. I wanna wear something else. 
It's gonna be my fit this time. What did I wear last time? This. <laughs> this makes me look shredded. <laughs> I'm into it. Okay, yeah, I'll be yoked this time. Dynasty name. Buttus Bagus. Begin. As a Twitch game. Okay, let's do different areas this time. So last time we did the Barons, the Counts, and the Patricians. So we'll do the Chiefs and the Grandees, and then um, let's give the Count. It's spooky season. Let's give the Counts another shot at life, you know? Okay, uh, I'm gonna run and grab a little bit more coffee. Feel free to join the game. You can do exclamation point join and then space and then uh, your preferred pronoun. So it'll default to they if you don't specify, but you could do exclamation point join space he or exclamation point join space she, um, and then it'll specify. Uh, but yeah. It'll, it'll just put you in, it, it'll try to keep them as even as possible. So you, you can't choose which one you want to be in. Okay. Ooh, there's so many of you now. All right. Be right back. Cont continue, continue, continue. we doing look at all these nobles hot damn okay devs were in chat what
Mm hmm. Okay. So, yellow list. Ready? One, two, three. 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 And that's the end of the yellow list. Oop. Blue list. Ready, steady. If you would like to do as some people did last time and change your name color and chat to reflect the region that you are a noble in, um, feel free. It was very fun. Blue list. Ready. One, two, three. 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 Oh, that's it. That's the end of the list. Purples. It's your redemption arc, purples. Let's go. One, two, three. 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 And that's it. Let's go. Council introduction. I would love to meet the Council of Nobles. Introduce yourself to the Chiefs of the North. Good luck in the days ahead, your greatness. You'll need it dealing with us a lot. <laughs> that was a Marianne, aw. An honor to finally make your acquaintance, your highness. May you escape the doom that befell your predecessor. Thank you, Bobbit. May the ninth god bless your reign, your holiness. I trust you will conduct yourself with honor and faith. Thanks. Who dat dog? The council hall immediately fills with raised voices as the nobles argue with each other and demand your favor. You sigh and sit back. Is this what the council is like? No wonder your father told you to avoid the throne. First few years of your reign are the most difficult. How can I stop them? Secure an heir. Okay. What do I want my goal to be this time? I'm not a wife guy this time. Okay. <laughs> this conversation is going to age poorly. The game's going to be like, look at this slightly aggressive person. Don't you feel affectionate toward them? And I'll be like, no! <laughs> I'm not a wife guy. Okay. Uh, let's go for, hmm. Let's go for farming. Are you hoping for a favorable passage in the history books? Once you have an heir, I'll return to discuss your ambition. Okay. Why the hurry? We wouldn't want that. 
It's my coronation. Okay. Um, just because we did it last time, I'm going to veto throwing the queen in the river. Let's do something new. <laughs> But traditions. I like that each region is like gravitating toward a specific one. <laughs> the chiefs are like, fuck traditions. And the counts are like, what? But a ball, a parade, jugglers, wine. <laughs> Guess we're doing a parade. Treasury is now 2,000. Stability is civil. Um, okay. End the season. Here we go, guys. A false pretender occupies the throne while my claim is ignored. Grandees of the South. This is a stain on our honor. We must not allow it to go unanswered. How would you guys like to overthrow me this game? This is only open to Team Yellow, to the grandees. So yeah, we'll go through each. Uh, this is the first, like, thing they have the regions do in this game. So we'll go one at a time to each one. You'll meet the successor, the or the or the person that you would put on the throne if you overthrow me. Um, and then that, that group specifically, that region can vote on what they want their, like, strategy to be, basically. Y'all are gonna convince people I'm a witch? Okay. All right. Your goal is to have high faith. There's all sorts of heresy going on in the capital, and the grandees intend to expose it. They must ensure the South is beyond reproach. To advance their scheme, the grandees must be the region with the highest faith in three seasons. It's a good start for you guys. Chiefs of the North, we all know I should be on the throne, not this imposter Queen Duger. How are we to make it happen? All right, chiefs. What's your plan? And they have a hot chief. <laughs> Just realized I'm like. closed. The chiefs plan to make an alliance with the ice giants and take over the kingdom. First, they must not be weak or the giants will not take their proposal seriously. To advance their scheme, the chiefs must raise their military to five or more in three seasons. You're already on track with that as well. My fellow counts, in ancient times, the east was its own proud kingdom. We can bring back those days of glory, but not while the false queen Duger wears the crown. What's your scheme this time? You want to go for a blood ritual again? Maybe it'll work this time. <laughs> I 
Last time, you know, you summoned a demon and it killed a lot of people. Your people. But maybe, maybe this time it'll work better. <laughs> The proper response is to summon another demon. <laughs> maybe maybe he'll be like, you know, the first time I wasn't sure, but you guys are growing on me. <laughs> Count's plan to summon an ancient famine demon who will devastate all other regions, paving a clear path to the throne. To advance their scheme, the Counts must be the region with the highest farming in four seasons. All right, these are your goals, guys. Remember. Remember who you are. You are my son, the one true king. So applicable to this game. All right. An exotic plant. Count Arctic Runner strides into the council chamber, brandishing a clay pot from which grows a long leafy plant with floppy yellow flowers. Our expert farmers have discovered a new kind of plant, your majesty. I thought you might like to name this exciting new discovery. <laughs> Descriptive, I like it. This stuff grows wonderfully fast. It tastes horrible, but the farm animals don't mind. I suggest we grow it in the east as livestock feed. Or perhaps it would make a nice addition to the palace decor. Um... Go for it. I won't say what it is that I want. As a reminder, the counts want high farming. So cultivating it in the east will 100% affect their farming. Not all counts are happy about their planty McPlant face being uprooted and put in the capital, but Count Arctic Runner is grateful for the cash. Meanwhile, planty McPlant face quickly establishes itself in your greenhouses, along your walls, and occasionally creeping into your windows. Yeah, I'm, I had to mirror the whole thing. Well, I guess I didn't have to. Hold on. There. <laughs> now that... Now the name is correct. Okay. Um, oh, a prediction. Your Majesty, excellent news from beyond the sky. As your highness knows, I'm something of an amateur astronomer. I've seen a solar eclipse is on its way, visible from the north. We must encourage the kingdom to gather beneath the dark sun and experience this once in a lifetime event. Ninth, preserve us. Nay, an eclipse is a warning from the ninth god, a sign that the kingdom has fallen to shadow. All the nobles start talking at once. Some are excited, some horrified, but all are very loud. Focus on holy protection. Encourage visitors to the north to witness the event. Um, I mean, I think this. 
That sounds fun. Let's all go watch watch a, a fun like sky event together. <laughs> all the yellow names on A. These votes have been really close this time. on B. <laughs> oh my god. By all that is holy, you shouldn't be encouraging this nonsense. As word gets out about the impending solar event, visitors from across the kingdom drift to the north. You need personal protection. I could plunge my sword into your heart right now, could I not? Please don't hurt me. You need an honor guard to keep you safe from such dangers. Okay. Are they gonna be the- No, they won't be the same because the regions are different. What are my options? The Northern Warriors. Bearded oafs with axes and no manners. They'll get drunk and cause trouble in the palace. No discipline at all. I can't guarantee they won't run off on a random quest, but they're honorable in a fight unbeatable. The Order of the Drowned Rose are respectable. They'll understand palace etiquette, etc. Tell me about the battle nuns. Oh my God. <laughs> Terrifying warriors. They've sworn a vow of silence. At least they won't spill state secrets. Their faith and loyalty is to the church above all, even your safety. And the people from the Tatterlands. Uh, okay. I know the battle nuns are good, but they're they're trying to they're trying to convince everybody that I'm a witch. So, uh, you know, I'm not gonna pick the counts again because I picked them last time. I'll pick the nuns. I'll pick the nuns. The battle nuns are good. The battle nuns arrive in the palace a few weeks later. They nod to you silently, their solemn steel masks betraying nothing before filing into formation behind your throne. All right, take a peep on what you can buy. Talk amongst yourselves. What would you like to get? You don't have to, people are saying this in chat, but you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to. Ready, steady, go. Time's up. All right. <clears throat> Purple went very hard, yeah. Oh, I don't know if I can move on from Gloria, dude. <laughs> I'll never love again. Solar Discovery. 
While scouting the north for a prime eclipse viewing spot, my servants discovered a portal, a shimmering shadow hanging in the air about the size of a door. We threw a rock in and it returned as a slab of polished obsidian. How exciting. Sent one of my servants through, they saw a red wasteland beneath a sky whose color defied the description. I recall a tale from my childhood of such a land where fairy beings gave vast riches to those brave enough to visit. Riches, you say, this portal is on my land. I have the rights to any riches it may contain. But I discovered it, my servants did. Great treasure lies beyond, I'm sure of it. Oh God. Why can't everybody go in? <laughs> they already sent one dude in there. <laughs> like, obviously, if we're talking about sending more people in, it's not a big deal for everyone to go in. I'll leave this to you guys. You guys decide what you want to do. Chiefs versus counts. This is so perfectly divided right now. <laughs> If you would like to join a, a region, you don't get to choose which region you join, but you can do exclamation point join in chat. And if you would like to specify your pronoun, you can do exclamation point join space she or exclamation point join space he. If you don't specify, it'll just uh, do they them for you. Okay. The chief owns the land. The chiefs are delighted and start making preparations immediately. The kingdom awaits to hear what riches or horrors are within. Meanwhile, complaints from the counts grow as the eclipse draws nearer. You feel relaxed and full of energy as Kant Arctic Runner strolls into the council chambers. That's why he got extra money. I was looking I was <laughs> looking at the, the funds and I was like, why is Arctic Runner more have more money than everybody else. And it's because I bought a bunch of plants. A stray tendril of planty McPlant face has curled around the arm of your chair. Wonderful day, isn't it, your majesty? Perhaps a little too wonderful. A few of the scholars have been researching the properties of planty McPlant face, and apparently the scent of the flowers has a euphoric effect. Perhaps it's a good thing if it makes everyone more cheerful. What's the harm? Uh... Keep it here, but make it illegal in the east. That's pretty fucked up. Um, I'm fine with either of the top two choices. Well, uh, I guess it's my plant. Stability challenge succeeded. Haha, -ha. the counts are relieved that their precious planty McPlant face has not lost its good rep. When you settle in your bed that night, you think you see leaves coiling across your ceiling. Oh my god. <clears throat> All right. What's the spouse situation, mom? 
Why haven't you found a spouse yet? I don't want to get married, Mom. A queen cannot rule alone. What's your preference? I'm not interested in love. Bye, my darling. Who said anything about love? This is a royal marriage. Tell me what manner of candidates I should find. And you can always say no after you've had a look. I don't care. Let's see what they have to offer. If I just say no to everybody, is that going to be an issue? <laughs> End of the season. Uh, I have no reason to tax anybody specifically, I don't think. <sighs> the chiefs made 500 wealth harvesting rare mushrooms. Nice, well done, guys. End of the season. Oh no, they're all me's. Okay. Oh yeah, one sec. One sec, chat. The sparkling energy brought by early planty McPlant face blooms has been replaced with a fever that hits the palace. No! Indoors, the air is thick with its heavy scent. Sweat pours from your brow like a waterfall. I love, I love that there are like through lines. They're not just like one-off events. Like depending on what you choose to do and these events, if they'll, they might like continue and branch off. I think that's so great. When servants open the windows, leaves and stems crowd inside as though hungry. When the scholars from Quail University investigate the planty McPlant face, it becomes clear it's responsible for the sickness. Wait out the fever. Pray for health? Oh, God. Um... See, again, A seems pretty fucked up. I took all of this plant from them, and now I'm like, it made us sick. <laughs> you have to help me. <laughs> like, oh goodness, here. Just, just vote, just vote, nobles. South sends its thoughts and prayers, my grace. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, this is very close. Okay. Farming challenge succeeded. Farmers from the east are recruited into a militia who call themselves the Uprooters. They snap immediately to attack into action. They cut and dig, and soon every trace of Planty McPlant face in the palace is gone. You're practically dizzy with the speed of it all. Good job, guys. Well done. 
<clears throat> Your Highness, this pigeon-livered popinjay has besmirched my honor. They insulted my late mother. They called her a tyrant. Which pigeon-livered popinjay are you talking about? Barefeet Nath of the Chiefs. Who's your mother? Firefly112, the senior. A fine woman, I assure you. She may have crushed a few rebellions in her time, but who hasn't? I would duel them to regain my honor as any grandee should, but Chief Barefeet Nath will not accept without your express permission. Hold on a minute. This is a matter of respect. We can't be dueling in Queen Duger's throne room without due process. You're a coward, Barefeet Nath, and you may as well admit it. At least I'm no bloodthirsty brute like yourself. It must run in the family. <laughs> Arrest them both. I, you guys can fight. I don't give a shit. Firefly grins wickedly, drawing his sword. Barefeet Nath snarls, drawing their axe, and squares up to face Firefly. The duelists circle each other for a while before Grandy steps in for the first move. Barefeet Nath jumps backward, batting the sword away. A second strike comes straight after, this time a feint. Barefeet Nath moves to defend. Firefly 112 twists and redirects his attack. The sword cuts cleanly through Barefeet Nath's clothing, who howls in pain. With that, Grandy Firefly 112 steps back and bows deeply. First blood, I win. Bravo, nicely fought, guys. The court returns to their business. Firefly 112 and the Grandees view your sanction of the duel as respecting their customs and are grateful. <laughs> no death, lame. All right, let's see who we got here. I found three potential matches for you. One eligible young candidate from each of the kingdom's three regions. Well, but I want to marry any of them. Let's see him. This is Finn, firstborn heir of the Northern Rat 44 Yo clan. Your typical Northern lad, big, brawny, and honest in the same way an ax to the face is honest. They keep the company of witch women and god speakers who have taught them mysterious secrets. Had a bit of controversy a while back when their clan hall burned down. Apparently their peasants were to blame. Okay. He seemed all right until this and now I'm concerned. Uh, not interested, next. Vostok, the eldest son of the Eastern projected monkey dynasty. They had a hell of a time getting him to smile for this portrait. He had a laboratory installed in his castle and spends most of his time there conducting bizarre experiments. Half the East are in love with him and the other half hate him. God damn it, game. <laughs> okay, interesting. Finally from the South, Bologna, the eldest daughter of the Abrady lineage. Reputed to have an ego the size of the sun. Nothing wrong with confidence. She's an obsessive gambler, a pastime frowned upon in the South. It's been the cause of some scandal. Unfortunately, she lacks the common touch. The peasants have some terrible nicknames for her. No, thank you. By picking a candidate, you'll anger the other regions. Do I marry the mad scientist? <laughs> I won't, I won't board, you know? <laughs> All right, all right. Yeah, okay. I've made my decision. Vostok of the East. You can do weird shit in my basement. I paused halfway through that sentence because I realized it was gonna sound like an innuendo and I didn't mean it to be. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if I wanted to finish or not. <laughs> All right, end of the season. Next time though, I don't care. I don't care who they show me. I don't care who they show me. I'm gonna be like, no, thank you. And see what happens. In a picturesque castle overlooking the Southern city of Aranjar, two grandees lie back and enjoy the sun. Praise be, whispers of our plan have reached the peasants. They are in an uproar. They're calling for the sins of the queen to be laid bare. I have leads on information from inside the palace that we can use against the queen. It's only a matter of time. What do you mean? We have the High Inquisitor on our side. We must also sow dissent among the other regions. We won't succeed alone. For the next stage of their scheme, the Grandees must raise another region's defiance to a combined total of at least eight. Or ensure another region begins a rebellion in three seasons. 
Everybody's pretty chill with me so far, so it's gonna be rough. Far to the north, where snow blankets the landscape and wolves howl in the night, the chiefs plot to bring about the end of the world, Ragnarok. Praise Morgana, initial talks with the ice giants are going so well, they've gifted us a new patch of fertile land in the northern valleys. The gods are good, with luck this will be the foundation of an alliance strong enough to rock the world. The ice giants are a formidable ally, tall as a building and limbs like tree trunks. Those southerners don't know how to fight them like we do, but first we must offer something the giants desire. A whole kingdom's worth of pillage. Just what I was thinking, if we fill the kingdom with bountiful goods and plunder, the giants won't be able to resist. For the next stage of the chief scheme, they must raise other regions' trade to a combined total of eight or more in three seasons. Interesting. That's so much, wait. But the chief, <laughs> wow. The grandees were given like hard mode here. Yeah, I'm not sure why the counts aren't advancing. They just needed to have the highest farming, right? Which they do. Their goal was longer. Oh, oh, it took four seasons for you guys's. I see. Yeah, this seems confusing. I'm, I don't know about that. I mean, I guess that's the point, right? Is to confuse people. <laughs> sure, we'll take it. A missing noble. In the capital, the solar eclipse does little except make the day a little gray. The north is a different story. Your majesty, the moment the sun went dark, Chief Fionel entered the shadow portal and vanished. I'm not sure what they expected would happen, but I warned the council of their ineptitude. Send a reliable adventurer in to rescue them. Send in the northern troops or wait and see if they come back on their own. Um... I don't really mind. Yeah, as a reminder, I would have to activate it for it to be for it to be reversed. This vote is not reversed. So you are you are voting for the thing you want, not the thing you don't want. <laughs> Just like before. Wait and see. Challenge failed. The portal shimmers dormant in the air for three days before closing without ceremony, and Chief Fayanel is never seen again. The land under which the portal once stood turns to shiny obsidian. Oh shit. Okay. The absence of planty McPlant face flowers in the palace has hit you hard. You can hardly drag yourself out of bed. The royal physician tells you there's little to do but wait for the lethargy to pass. Sorry, your majesty, I know you're unwell, but in your absence, the council has been taking certain liberties. Is there anything we can do to hasten your recovery? I fear you've already spent far too long in bed. Um, throw a party? Pretty stable.
You invite the counts to a grand feast. No! Celebration proves too much for your fragile constitution. You faint mid-speech, falling face first into a plum tart. No, with the air of someone take, talking to a naughty school child, your physician orders you back to bed. By the time you return to the council, a shadow of your former self. The chiefs, counts, and grandees are at each other's throats. The affairs of state are in a true mess. Oh my god, can I just get married already? Jesus. Your wedding to Vostok is naturally the talk of the kingdom. Feels like you're the only one not taking part. I do. I pronounce you queen and husband. <clears throat> Your new husband, Vostok, refuses to dance at all, preferring instead to brood in the corner. <laughs> the opposite of Gloria. By the time you find yourself alone with Vostok, it's past midnight. You've never felt more tired. Did you see the eight crows perched on the church tower as we walked into the cathedral? A dire omen. Sure, there's nothing to worry about. Your words don't seem to sink in. Instead, Vostok bursts into tears. Pheasants have the right idea. They get married for love, not politics. Oh, to live the simple life of a commoner. We're in this together, bud. You comfort Vostok long into the night, listening as he expresses his doubts and fears. As dawn breaks, he falls asleep on your shoulder, exhausted. <laughs> Aww. Pat, Pat. Vostok's a millennial. <laughs> Late at night, two counts meet in an ancient stone cemetery to discuss their schemes against the queen. Her grain stores are looking much more impressive than the rest of the kingdom. Yes, I've had peasants from the north moving onto my lands, desperate to sponge off our prosperity. How delightful. It's magic beyond our usual fare. The next stage of the scheme, the counts must lower stability to four or less in two seasons. We're at six. It's very doable for you guys. I don't have an heir yet. Don't do anything rash, guys. Missing nobles. Horror in the east and a city in flames. Your Majesty, there's been a terrible fire in the city of Aranjar, where once there were buildings, there is now a field of smoldering ash. Dozens of peasants have died. What caused the fire? Filled with religious conviction, the townsfolk seized a traveling wizard and attempted to burn him at the stake for practicing dark magic? Jesus. I understand he walked out of the city unharmed. The same cannot be said for those who tried to burn him. Sorry about your city. I was hoping the council might unlock some funds from the treasury so we could rebuild. <sighs> Find and punish the wizard? Why is it the wizard's fault? They bur They tried to burn the wizard. It's not all <laughs> It's not the wizard's fault that y'all set the whole town on fire trying to trying to kill him and he was fine. My choice is that we don't help out. It sounds like y'all were a bunch of bigots and it backfired. <laughs> but how is he fine? He was probably a wizard. <laughs> he probably has natural fire resistance. Still not his fault that he was set on fire and it wound up burning down a town. <laughs> My blues. <laughs> My blues in Christ. My yellows in Christ. <laughs> Isn't voting reversed? No. If I turn voting reverse on, voting reverse is something I can put on a vote. I have not done that yet. So voting is not reversed. I 
As a reminder, grandees, yellow team, you are trying to raise the defiance of the other regions. Just throwing that out there. The counts are trying to lower stability. The chiefs are trying to make everyone else's trade equal to eight or more, which it already does. So that the ice giants will be like, yum, yum. No help. No help. Send word to the grandees of Aranjar. They will be expected to rebuild their own city without the queen's help. By the ninth! What's the point of having a queen in the first place? All right. Missing nobles. Your holiness, a number of grandees have gone missing in the east. They traveled to Kontsmunsky Six's castle to negotiate a trade. They should have returned weeks ago. The missing grandees never even made it to my lands. They most likely got lost. The east is a dangerous place. Who's gone missing? Anyone I care about? Where could they have gone? North of my estate lies the Mold Powder Forest, to the west the Twilight Lake Land, and to the south Illyrian's Haunt. I like to live remotely. It does wonders for the soul. Who's gone missing? Three grandees are missing. Rat093, Lacking Sanity, and Foxes. I'm certain that this is some kind of ploy by Kant's Moon Sky. In a few months' time, they'll try to quietly offer us a ransom. Blood and stars, don't be foolish. We'll find them. We just have to decide where to focus our efforts. Spoon Sky will be executed for abducting them? We have no we have no proof of that. No. We're not, we're not executing anybody without proof. Who needs proof? Whoa. Grandies, you gotta chill a little. Yeah, don't get mad at me for taking away an opportunity for you to take the throne from me. A detachment of Kant's Moonsky Six's bravest knights venture into the bedeviled marshland, known as Elarian's Haunt. Remarkably, the missing grandees are found alive and well. Well, how do you like that? God bless you. We're in debt to you. Ninth, preserve us. We've been eating bugs for a month. Take this as a thank you. It's an antique teapot from the Cursed Age, as I understand it. We found it in the bog. Would you believe it? Keep it. 
Thank you. We appreciate the gesture. Oh no, you all like me so much. <laughs> oh, that really works against me and what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Your Grace, a monster has been stalking my farms at night, smashing down the doors of cottages and feasting on the peasants inside. That sounds ghastly. Only a few have seen the beast and lived to tell the tale. The survivors tell a garbled story about gleaming fangs amid a mountain of blood-soaked fur. We know nothing more. How should the council deal with the monster in the east? Go for it. Sorry, my husband's texting me about our kid. Voting is closed. No concern of ours. The monster continues to be a menace in the east, growing more bold every day. You hear reports that it no longer confines its attacks to the nighttime. Stability is teetering. Oh no, peasants are too afraid to tend their crops, which lie rotting in the fields. No! <laughs> Shit. Ready, steady, go. second. Okay, one sec. BRB.
Blue wants the ice giants to kill everyone. Purple wants to unleash demons. And yellow just wants to burn one witch. So yellow is the good guys here. A good message. How are we all doing? How are we enjoying the game? I'm actually enjoying this game so much. I typically sort of steer clear of games where the, the Twitch integration is like a lot of chat spamming, but I feel like because of the nature of the game, it's actually encouraging like a lot of chat interaction. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's been really fun on my end. I think there are some things that they can do with the UI um, to make it a, a bit uh, more like user-friendly. Um, people being able to see what faction they're in easily, uh, whether that's with a command or what would be really nice. Um, being able to check like, d double check like exactly what people's goals are, what it is that they want um, and that sort of stuff at any time. Being able to bring up that menu would be really nice. I think a Twitch plugin would be super useful as well. That's a whole separate like development thing though. But if they were able to do that, if they were able to do it like Cult of the Lamb style where it's like a widget, like a plugin, that would that would be awesome. That'd be a huge game changer, I feel like. King of the Castle devs here. We're working on an update that'll answer a ton of your feedback and it'll be out very soon. Dev in chat, dev in chat. <laughs> Thanks for swinging by. We're really enjoying the game. Can't use plugins on mobile. That is true. Plugins don't work on mobile, but it would be a really easy way for people to, without having to like spam chat, they would be able to easily access all the information they need, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I mean, as it is right now, when I go through the lists, if you're on mobile, people are saying if they're on mobile, they can't read the list anyway. So either way, people on mobile are kind of like missing a bunch of information, you know? Keep an eye on updates. Should have it out really, really soon. All right. I believe in you. <laughs> I believe in you. All right, let's hop back in. Ugh, it's so weird to me that I'm flipping. <laughs> it's weird. Okay. You're aware of the ice giants, I hope. Brutish creatures that live in the frozen wastes beyond our northern borders. In a time before time, they ruled the north and kept people as slaves. The chiefs are willing to let bygones be bygones. They're trying to forge an alliance with the giants to bring down your kingdom. Or are the chiefs offering them? My intelligence suggests the chiefs have offered up the kingdom as plunder for the giants when the time comes. Problem is they might just succeed. Our kingdom's trade is prospering in most regions. Even the giants will know an opportunity when they see one. What am I gonna do, tank my economy? That would be one strategy. Send a tribute to the giants. Oh, geez. Interesting. Trust in the strength of our arms to defeat them. Build a wall along the northern border. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, didn't that didn't work super well in Game of Thrones? Spoilers. What are you doing? Have you got a new baby? Cat is walking around with a. Um, any of you that use hot water bottles, we've got like little um, like knitted covers for hot water bottles. He's just walking around with them in his mouth. Hey. Okay. Come on then. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, 
Go for it. I didn't do anything. I can't believe it doesn't say anywhere when you turn that on. I know, I'm actually shocked. For those of you who are confused, um, I used my monarchy power and turned on reverse voting. So you're actually voting for the thing that you don't want to happen. Because I decided to be an asshole. Um, and it literally doesn't say anywhere that I did that, which I love. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. <laughs> A wall, I really don't think that's necessary. Such things always end up being torn down eventually. Perhaps they're right, but at least it will take some time for the giants to tear the wall down. Wait. Is that right? Is that the thing that had the least amount of votes? That's pretty funny. At least it will take some time for the giants to tear the wall down. Work on the so-called Duger's wall. Begins right away and there's no time to waste. <clears throat> the chief stat goal will not be evaluated for another two seasons. <laughs> oh, God. Your Highness, an urgent matter. My agents suspect there's a reason behind the recent unrest. The counts are stirring up chaos to power some kind of dark ritual. Ooh, I like this person. They're very severe looking. What sort of ritual? We don't know yet. They've been too careful, but we must fight back against the sacrilege. Hmm. Um, I'm not going to just leave the counts alone. Sorry, guys. So... Voting is no longer reversed. You're voting for what you do want, not for what you don't want. <laughs> Who are these purple traitors? <laughs> But I do wonder, when when I see things like this, this is what does make me wonder, like, if people don't know what team they're on, you know? Anybody who joined halfway through the game hasn't seen the list, so they won't, they won't know right away what team they're on. <clears throat> if you don't know, just follow your heart, yeah. But in a, in a game where, like, cohesion of the team can do, like, huge for you, um, it is pretty important that people are able to check that, you know. But they said they're working on that, so. Okay. Stability is now stable. Authority is dubious. Defiance is aloof. Okay. Stability went up. Time for me to have a baby. 
Congratulations are in order. Uh, went about as well as could be expected. You're still in power. That's what matters. You've done well so far. Something's missing. An heir. You need someone young whose loyalty is assured. We'll have a kid together. It, again, it feels weird that he's not here to have this conversation with us. It feels like this shouldn't just be my call, <laughs> but uh, this, I'll, sure, I'll have a kid. The traditional method, no one will object to that. I'll arrange for you to take a month off from ruling so you can get down to business. Mom, get out of here, you're so embarrassing. A grandee paces back and forth along the balcony of their hillside villa. I'm told that progress is slow. How could they be so blind? Trusting in that fool of a queen after everything she's done. The grandee's aim is to raise other regions combined defiance to eight or more. That's so hard. That's really rough. Uh, trying to do that. A pair of counts face each other in silence. A code word is exchanged. They speak of their latest schemes. The kingdom was meant to be a whirlpool of chaos by now. More like a whirlpool of smiles and hugs. A demon won't go near it. The count's aim is to lower stability to four or less. Man, you guys got fucked over in, with the very last thing. And the chiefs will be uh, tapped into... Chiefs are tapped into, yeah. Um. <clears throat> A noble kidnapped? Your Highness, your loyal noble vassal, Count Eximint, has been taken hostage. Kidnapped? What do you mean? Some criminal organization. These horrid miscreants demand gold and safe passage to Ashmead in exchange for eggs and mint's return. Oh no, I can't pay the ransom. How much do they want? What the fuck? I'm very sorry, eggs and mint. My Final Fantasy XIV buddy. I'm so sorry. Um, send troops after the kidnappers. Ignore the letter. Uh, I mean, this is what I would choose. <laughs> Eximent, what? <laughs> you were kidnapped, Eximent. Uh, the honorable noble Eximent was kidnapped. And we're trying to decide what to do about it. Can we get the 60% of nobles having voted? The queen screwed us last round. Look, I think I've pissed off every group during this run so far. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> Equal opportunity. The outlaws are no match for the East's forces, which rush to Eggs and Mint's aid. Military challenge success. The East is now loyal to me. Authority is now credible. Some of the Count's wealth has increased. Treasury is now pretty high. Eastern fighters recover a hoard of gold and gems. Noise. The true monster. Remember when I came to you with word of a monster preying upon peasants in the east? It's difficult to forget. I now have reason to believe the culprit may be one of my fellow counts. Count Opadaisy, to be precise. The peasants believe Count Opadaisy transforms into a colossal bloodthirsty beast once every seven nights. Do we know of something like this happening before? Only in legend, King Carvec II was said to turn into such a beast and slaughter his servants at night. 
In the day, he was as mild-mannered as a baby duck and had no memory of his crimes. Perhaps the same is true here. What should we do? Do not call a public vote on the matter. It would embarrass Kanta Apadesi greatly for no good reason. <laughs> okay. Send inquisitors to investigate the claims. Arrest them. It should be put to a vote. I'll send a message as... If you could please... Not turn into a beast. Don't embarrass me! <laughs> Hmm. Inquisitors uh, don't really seem like my vibe. But also just arresting somebody on the word of grizzly turkey. I'm very sorry. I'm sure you're lovely. But like, again, I have no proof of anything, you know? Which I guess is why you would send inquisitors. But I don't trust the inquisitors to not be like weird about it. <laughs> Hmm. You know what? I will put it to a vote. The council, of course, is shocked at the revelation that Kanta Padesi is responsible for the horrors of the East. Infamy! Libel! I'm innocent! Oh no. All right. What would you like to do, chat? I put it in your hands. Behave. Let's get to 60%, maybe? Cannot allow this dangerous beast to live. You place us all at risk. Quiet fool! Count Appa Daisy may be a monster, but they still have noble blood like you or I. A few days later, you hear word the monster's attacks have ceased. Count Appa Daisy apparently has taken to locking themselves up at night. That's good. I mean, it's sad that that's necessary, but they they listened, you know. Those damn chiefs are up to their old tricks. Chief Kosirska has been leading her warriors on raids into my lands. Nobody was hurt, but they shook down my peasants for petty coin and stole cabbages straight from my fields. Trade is up. Uh, Simeon Wizard's wealth has decreased. How dare you accuse me of something like that again? It's my axial answer to. Your greatness, I have no idea what Count Simeon Wizard is talking about. Maybe he's had too much wine. Compensate them for the stolen goods. Send the Spy Master to investigate the claims. That's what I would do. Tell Simeon Wizard to bring proof when making accusations. Go for it, chat.
done? Send in the spy manster. Spy spist manster. <laughs> I'm insulted the council doesn't believe me. And I'm insulted the council doesn't believe me. Damn. The grandees really slam dunked that one. <laughs> you got two defiance out of that. Send the spy manster. Spy manster. <laughs> Fuck. To see if Count Simeon Wizard's accusations hold water. The northern border is distant. It'll be a few weeks before she gets back. Okay. Back in the north, Chief Verdunkslungavaher is hosting yet another feast in their clan hall. Meat is being passed around in good measure. Some chiefs are dancing on the tables. That can only mean two things. Really good news or really bad news. Burnt out bagel, pass me the drink, you old lout. I'm drinking until my ancestors feel it. For those ice giants I saw on my way through your lands, have we really done it? Your eyes don't deceive you. They'll be marching with us come the morrow. The gods are good, but what happens after the ice giants march? Acts of my ancestors, I hadn't thought about that. Someone, fetch me another drink and assemble the other chiefs. Quickly, damn it. <laughs> you guys didn't think about it? You didn't talk about what happens after the ice giants start destroying shit? Blues, this is you. This is your vote. Do you want to let the ice giants fight alone? Or do you want to march with the giants? Sam, basically, the reason that I that I keep having to look at my phone is because um, Sam got a message from Clark's dentist saying, hey, Clark has an appointment today. And I was like, but I literally just checked to see when her next dental appointment is because I was curious yesterday. And it's dismiss. And it's it's definitely not today. And he was like, but they just called me. So are you sure? And I was like, I mean, I'm pretty sure I have the card, but I can take a break really quick because because he was like in the middle of something. I mean, I am too, but <laughs> I was like, I can take a break really quick and call them. Um, but they didn't answer. So, <laughs> so I was like, I don't know. All I can say is I have a card that says a totally different day. <laughs> so... There won't be much left of the palace after this, but we'll build a new one. Bigger and fancier with more bones. More bones! Ale sloshes all over the floor as the chief teeters on the edge of a bench. Either way, we'll sort it out when we're done pillaging. For now, let's party! We do need to make sure the kingdom is sufficiently unstable, don't forget, or they'll unite and repel us, ice giants or no. For the final stage of their scheme, the chiefs must lower stability to three or less. I don't like this because two two groups now are trying to lower stability. <laughs> okay. Monarch can mark their preferred voting option. A noble's choose to vote is hidden from the monarch's view. Um, I don't want another law. End it. I don't want it!
This simply can't go on, your majesty. These arch boffins think they know everything, but they know nothing of the ninth god's wrath. Please, your majesty, we found a perfect site for an observatory high in the southern hills. It's on Grandia Admiral Magic's land, and they refuse to let us build there. Such things are heresy. The stars are just as big and close as the ninth god intended. Who put you up to this idea? I bet it was one of those counts, like Megatron. Should the scholars be allowed to build an observatory? I mean, just find somewhere else to put it, right? It's their land. They don't want it there. Um, I mean, I, I think it's their land, so they, like, I'll veto constructing it. But beyond that, do whatever you want. Just find a different place for it, right? Surely. Yellows, as a reminder, you want defiance up, not down. So C actually works against you. Just as a reminder. <laughs> Is it your defiance? Be nice if the ups and downs were region color coded yeah that's another thing that people were saying is like sometimes it's really unclear and maybe this is on purpose but sometimes it's really unclear like who these things are going to affect this is disappointing your majesty the grandees are standing in the way of progress don't listen to her. The Ninth God will reward you for your dedication. They are now zealous. Great. Great, very cool. Your Highness, dreadful tidings from our new fortress. What's happened to it? There's no people here. It's not the fortress exactly. The fortress overlooks a lovely park that was planted by Queen Alma the Wise herself. In the middle stands the Greater Arrow Tree, a unique specimen that stands over 200 feet tall. That's a very tall tree. It is indeed, your majesty, but that's part of the problem. All the visitors to our newly built fortress are disturbing the soil and the greater arrow tree is dying. How do we protect the greater arrow tree? Okay, I need to be careful here. I already vetoed one, shit. I mean, I'll mark what I want. I don't think that it matters too much, though. I wish I could veto, but I wasted it. Because I want that stability up. I don't trust you bitches. <laughs> I don't think anything's gonna top that. Okay. Oh, stability challenge succeeded. 
becomes a symbol not only of the reign of Queen Alma the Wise, but of your wisdom and knowing when to let nature just take its course. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Your Majesty, a traveling bard. She says she has come to compose a song for you. Not just any bard, Your Highness. The best in all the land. Sally Six Fingers, they call me. A song about me? Of course. In fact, I have the tune and verse all but ready. I've saved my best work for you, my queen. All I require is a subject. What should I tell the masses of you? What, what would you like to inspire? I want them to love me. I will do so, Your Highness. Absolutely. Give me but a few weeks and everyone within the Crown Lands will know of your benevolence. I need but only a small payment of 500 gold. A discounted rate for one as esteemed as yourself. I do love the arts. You deserve more than that. What about a thousand? Oh shit. I'll pay you quadruple. Hmm. I don't wanna heck myself. I love the arts this much. Thank you, your majesty. She hurries out of the throne room to do your bidding. The song is the desired effect. Everyone praises your good nature. Nice. <laughs> Stability up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pay your artists, everybody. The monarch currently has no heir. I'm working on it, okay? My husband is very tender, okay? It's, you know, we're working on it. <laughs> Shit. All right, the Chiefs are on their third, their third run. Trying to get stability to three. The Grandees are trying to raise everyone's defiance to at least eight. It's currently at five. Um, and the Counts are trying to lower the Kingdom's stability to four. So the counts are probably gonna reach their goal first because two of you guys are working to do that. So I'm kind of hosed here probably. My heir! Yeah, let's have a plague of rats. Rat king, rat king. Your quest for an heir is finally complete. You stand before the council holding a small child. Council hall is filled with nervous silence. My child. The assembled nobles break out into polite applause. By designating an heir, you've cemented the stability of the kingdom. Maybe the first to congratulate you on the birth of your child. What is their name? Duker the second, obviously. I love that stability. <laughs> the gods are good, your greatness. I'm sure little Duker the second will grow up to be a chip off the old block. Um, okay. Plague of rats, sure. Grandy Bird Girl strides into the council chambers, distraught, waving a dead t rat by its tail. The fields and barns of the south are overrun by vermin. We've no more poison for these horrible things. We can't cope anymore. Take the rat and go. Deliver su a supply of rat poison. Send them cats. Hire some adventurers to clear out the rodents. I'm honestly fine with whatever. So, go for it. Enjoy. will finally be unleashed. Finally. <laughs> Okie dokie. Beep.
Mandy Bird Girl bows to you deeply. I can't thank you enough, your majesty. This is gonna go so bad. You send a caravan of cats over to the south. By the time they reach their destination, they're hungry and angry. The perfect rat-catching mindset. Despite a promising start, cats prefer lazing around in the sun to actually catching vermin. The grandees lament the foolishness of the council. I tried. Corroboration. The spy master has finally returned from investigating Count Simeon Wizard's claims of raids. No doubt about it, your majesty, Count Simeon Wizard was telling the truth. Multiple eyewitnesses saw the chief leading her warriors across the land, looting and pillaging. See, I told you, and I demand justice. You caught me, but I was just keeping the old ways alive. Nobody got hurt, and I only stole a few chickens. What's the harm in that? Oh, goodness. Uh... You can't just say, like, it's fine, everybody go home. This has turned into such a fucking ball ache. <laughs> But I want her arrested. Do I want her arrested even if it means stability goes down? Am I that cocky? Do what you will. Do what you will. Damn, damn, damn. I'm not even mad about it. It's what I wanted, so. The North will always remember the old ways of pillage and conquest. The watch drags the chief off to the dungeon. Hopefully that's the end of this messy saga. It's not. <laughs> Stability is now civil. Authority is commanding. Okay, so one more defiance on the chiefs, but one less defiance on the counts. Uh, I'm fine with that. Thank you for dealing with that, Your Grace. It's a shame we must live with these uncivilized pagans in our kingdom. Okay, everybody chill out. Everyone calm down. Okay. Figure out what you want to buy. If you want to buy anything. Ready, steady, go. Damn, damn, damn. Oh no. My ambition! Oh, I've had a baby! So I can actually like do my ambition stuff. At the start of your reign, you said you wanted to be the mother of the nation. So far, you've not convinced anyone. The kingdom's farms aren't producing enough food. Peasants can't rely on you. Defiance is now mutinous. Whoa, come on, man. Current ambition isn't going to work out for you. If you want to stop the nobles from overthrowing you, you need to pivot and change your image. Infiltrate each region with loyal spies. Defeat their schemes with schemes of our own. Your other advisors have other ideas. Crush these disloyal nobles. Smash their armies. Force them to submit. 
If you help us spread the zeal of the ninth god, the church will lend our full support. With the backing of the church, the nobles wouldn't dare move against you. Don't listen to these fools. Have you heard of the Scepter of Sages? It's a lost artifact forged by Queen Alma the Wise. There's a legend that any queen who recovers it will rule over a golden age. Cover the scepter. Get elevated to a living saint. Okay, stability and trade. Authority and faith. Authority and military. Faith and trade. I don't want to do anything that relies on stability because y'all are working against me. I'll go for this because everybody's trade is pretty good. I'll begin sending out adventurers to track down the scepter's location. Adventurers aren't cheap. Your priority is to raise the kingdom's overall faith and trade as much as you can. Of course, there can't be open rebellion among the nobles. Okay. Yeah, like everybody's in the middle of the road on trade. You know. Your Majesty, I wish to speak with you about the situation in the north. Too long have the northerners been allowed to worship their heathen tree gods in brazen defiance of the ninth god. Allow me to send some of my best missionaries to the north. It's for the good of the realm. Stability down, god damn it. I'll bring it to the council. Of course, Your Majesty. I knew this would be close. This is fun. It's really fun for me to watch votes that I know are gonna be like kind of neck and neck. <laughs> I had a I had a feeling. <laughs> this is amazing. Neck and neck, dude. Yeah, you can get a tie. And then I choose if it's a tie. But it looks like that's it. Oh, got a few more people voting at the last second. Are only 50% of people voting? I don't know. It's a tie right now. Not anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to let it hit 60%. There it is, 60%. This is erasure of our culture. We won't forget this, you rabid pack of tyrants. I agree with you. Also, their defiance is at nine. Fuck. <laughs> the mission goes ahead despite protests from the chiefs. Your stable and prosperous kingdom gives weight to the missionary's words. 
the North Faith goes up. Oh, damn. Archbishop is more than pleased, and I get a bunch of money. Uh-oh. I need to keep- I need to keep y'all from- <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Okay. Oh, we have one more. <laughs> this is very good. It's a day like any other. You're sitting in the council hall listening to your nobles argue about something or another. Today's session is getting particularly heated. By the ninth, my good cons, you must understand my position. We simply cannot lower tariffs. Your profiteering will leave me penniless, penniless. Oh dear, get away from me. I feel faint. <gasps> it's Oppa Daisy. Are they about to, are they about to hulk out? Uh, oh no. Oppa Daisy's the one that's like a werewolf or something, right? Someone fetch the physician. I have a, I have half a mind to, to, ow before the astonished eyes of the council, Kant Daisy's flesh ripples and bulges. Jet black hair spreads across their body. Huge gleaming claws sprout from their fingers. With incredible speed, Kant Daisy pounces on Grandy Kite. Kite. -g, and clamps their jaws on the Grandy's throat. No! Blood sprays across the faces of the rest of the council. Shock gives way to panic when the monster turns its glowing eyes their way. The council hall fills with shrieks and blubbering. Oh my god. Honor guard, protect me! The Sisterhood of Steel draw their scimitars and charge in perfect formation. The monster tears them apart! No! My battle nuns! I got an achievement for getting all of my battle nuns killed. <laughs> Once you're... <laughs> Once your honor guard are dead, the monster leaps upon you, sinking its scarlet fangs into your shoulder. Am I, am I, <laughs> am I about to become a werewolf? That would be a wild turn in this. With a final shudder, it dies as the last of its blood gushes from its wounds. You stand in the gore-soaked council hall, catching your breath, clutching your injured shoulder. The cowardly nobles have fled, taking advantage of the monster's distraction. Only the spy master and the marshal remain. You don't see that every day. Thanks, marshal. Are you all right, your majesty? I need medical assistance. The marshal fetches the royal physician who hurriedly begins bandaging your shoulder. The wound is slow to heal. Thankfully, it doesn't appear infected. Your physician expects a full recovery. Where is my husband? I married that man and now he's just sitting in the basement doing weird experiments and has not said a thing to me. We did have a baby though. Anyways, end of the season, I guess. Deep in the south, in the back garden of a sun-bleached villa, a number of grandees crowd around a figure, raising their arms in a toast. Here is to the future Queen Torcada and the golden age on the horizon. May the ninth god strike down the false queen for her wickedness. Soon the Inquisition will be complete and the archbishop will crown our claimant. What should be done with the queen? All right, what's your, what's your final strat, yellow team? Time to vote. What will happen to Queen Duger now that we've destroyed her reputation? Burn her at the stake or show mercy? I can't believe that you're all going to try and lower my stability. Let them come! Bring it! Aha! Chat united at last. Hmm. A glorious way to usher in the new queen, I say. The ninth god will surely be pleased. The current queen's grip on the kingdom must be at an all-time low. We wouldn't want to face any backlash from our little fireworks show, would we? For the final stage of their scheme, grandees must lower stability to four or less. Does that mean that two regions can be successful at the same time? No, once you get stability to four, if you get it to exactly four, um, then the counts can move on to their final stage. And honestly, if I manage to 
if you get it to four and then I manage to get it, like, stable again, it might behoove you to be trying to do something different. Because <laughs> everyone's all in on stability right now. If I can keep it up, I'll win. So, so who knows? <clears throat> The rebellion report. Fevered dreams, bro. I'm gonna turn into a werewolf. Stability's gonna go down. I'm so fucked. Over the course of the winter, you find yourself plagued by horrific dreams. You're running through open woods, full of screams as your colossal jaws bite beast and human alike. You're always hunting, always hungry. The council has noticed your lack of sleep as you become tired and irritable during court sessions. Something must be done. Where is my husband? Yeah, I know I'm a werewolf. set out on your steed and spend a weekend preying on game in the black wield the dark and ancient forest not far from the capital strange urges creep in you want to jump on your prey and rip them apart with your teeth the dreams grow more vivid oops oops did i make it worse <laughs> your highness help us half the east is on fire trade is now poor trade is now wealthy some count's wealth has decreased. Stability is now st <laughs> Stability went down. Chief Kozirska the second was furious that we imprisoned her mother for raiding, and now she's leading a much more violent raid against the East. We must stop her, your majesty. The pagans are even looting and burning Eastern churches. Stripping the gold from the altars, an example must be made. Okay, I have to veto the thing that gets rid of stability. <sighs> Go on then. We'll wait until it hits 60%, unless it seems like it's not going to. Are subscribers nobles? No. Anybody any anybody can become a noble. You just do exclamation point join and you become a noble from a region. Yeah, I think once they fix the clarity problems. Like, the game is already super fun, even with people being confused occasionally, you know? Where's my ring? Oh, no. It always bites me in the ass. 59. Voting is closed. 
By the time the northern warriors cross back over the border, weighted down by loot, the east is devastated. Ch several churches have been reduced to matchsticks. Faith is down. Faith is down. Some of the chiefs are wealthier, though. North sees this as a triumph of the old gods over the ninth. All the extra treasure doesn't hurt morale. Shoot. When the marshal arrives to arrest the chief, she puts up a hell of a fight. You'll never take me alive, you bastards! Valtor, lend me strength! Ra! By the time she dies in a hail of arrows, a dozen members of the city watch lie dead at her feet. The other nobles whisper, you should have stamped out the raid earlier before the loot could be returned to the north. Now it's too late. The money has been hidden around the north and can't be recovered. Well, time to rebel, chiefs. 48% of you have decided to rebel. Your Majesty, I have the most exciting news. The adventurers we hired have discovered an ancient manuscript hidden deep beneath the mountains. It speaks of the Scepter of Sages. Excellent. Thank them for me. They prefer thanks to be expressed through gold. The manuscript is written around the time of Queen Alma's death. Within is the secret of where the scepter was hidden. Unfortunately, whoever wrote it used a strange code. I've only translated a bit so far. The writer was worried about the unworthy getting a hold of the scepter. Can you translate any more of it? I'll work day and night. Faith of the kingdom is on the deadline. Oh, on the decline. We might need to raise it before you can hope to wield the scepter. The kingdom's economy is on the wane. This must change. Uh, your goal is to raise the kingdom's overall faith and trade as much as you can. Right. Also to not uh, get killed by the chiefs. Nobles can change their minds. How nobles choose to vote is hidden. I'm good. Yep, there they go. Currently rebelling. <laughs> the kingdom is in rebellion. The first side to earn five victory points will win. Victory points are earned through events. If the rebels are victorious, the monarch is overthrown. The rebellion is going. Your Majesty, I have dire news. Grandee Explosive Monkey was found in the palace gardens this morning, attacked by something torn limb from limb. Uh-oh. <laughs> As they were technically your guests at the time, we must make every effort to assure the grandees it was not intentional. You suddenly recall the night before dreams of blood and gore, ripping a helpless noble apart with your powerful jaws. Your Highness, are you listening? This isn't a lie. Despite your well-crafted story, the grandees are not so easily appeased. One of their own dying while under your protection reflects badly on the crown. No! All right, you know what? You know what? All right. Maybe I liked it. Maybe I liked it. Stability three. <laughs> I don't know what happens now. Two of you needed to hit stability three in order to win, so. <laughs> Oh, except you guys are paused because you're in rebellion. Oh my god, wait. So the, do the grandees win then? <laughs> That's incredible. Well. Long last, the chiefs have reached their boiling point. You're confronted in your throne by a chief almost drunk. Their tattoos seeming to shift in the light of the braziers. Chiefs of the North will rip that false crown from your head and stomp it in the mud. We will be fighting for glory, for honor, and for Grimolf, the true king. This is a formal declaration of war. The next time we see each other, we'll be on the battlefield. One day I'll see your head on a spike. Get hecked. There will be many heads on spikes before this war is over. Mine will not be among them. Chief almost drunk strides from your throne room without looking back. I didn't expect them to move so boldly, your majesty. What are our chances against them? Your majesty, everyone in the palace who understands the situation has wet the 
themselves. This is it, civil war. The kingdom is divided. There will be a lot of death and suffering before this is all over. Can't wait. I'll go dig out the trebuchets. I love her. All right, and the opening strike. Too long have those bastards in the crown lands held us down. Too long have they called us heathens and mocked our way of life. Now is the time to take up our axes and fight back. Morgana is with us. We'll burn their churches and string up their lying priests. Now I ask you brave chiefs of the free north, where will we strike first? We can launch a preemptive strike against the counts to cripple their military capabilities. If we suspect the grandees may join our cause, we can call them to war. They'll be more likely to join us if the queen's authority is low. Or finally, we could just send off an assassin and nip this in the bud. Dishonorable, but convenient. I love the BM of like making you guys vote on this. This is blue only. Only blues can vote on this. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's based on a percentage going by their military, right? And they have high military. It makes sense that they would choose that. The chiefs launch a surprise attack on the east, slashing and burning their way across fields and farmlands. It failed. Oh shit. <laughs> Before they can get too far, the eastern army springs an ambush, catching the northern soldiers totally unawares. Jeez, that must have been basically a nat one. Most pleasing, no mercy for traitors. Long live the queen. The Northern Army are forced into a disorderly retreat back to their own lands, losing demoralized troops to ambush and desertion along the way. All right, well, pretty sure the Grandies just won, so. Two counts meet on the outskirts of a barren farm. Mind it's gonna wait until the last second to be like, oh, by the way, all, none of this matters. Somebody already won. <laughs> Two counts meet on the outskirts of a barren farm, wind whipping at their long coats. Good news, bad news, but good for us. Fires, wanton murder, giant spiders. The fabric between worlds is wearing thin. The time is ripe to summon a demon. Which honored guest should we invite? Which, which devil do you want? Which demon do you want on your side? The Lord of Dismay or the Hungering Absence? <laughs> Blues, we got XCOM'd. <laughs> Ankarazad will never break through while the church has its claws in the heart of the people. If we make this kingdom ideal for its presence, he will sweep through the land and leave nothing but grinning corpses. From one of these corpses, we will simply pick up the crown. At the final stage, counts must lower their faith to one or less. They already did. They already did that. Everybody wins. <laughs> Everybody wins. So now what? What the fuck? Struggle to keep your eyes open as you pour over letters late one night. The candle burns low. Just as you're about to get a nose full of ink, there's a soft knock at the door. Good evening, your majesty. I'm awake. I came to have a little chat. I'm concerned for your safety. I don't like it when you give me that look. You should listen carefully. There are a number of rumors circulating about you at the moment. All preposterous, I'm sure. Yes, preposterous. 
The common folk are easily swayed. Many think you're a monster. If not literally, then figuratively. Before you can answer, your marshal bursts through the door, a panicked look on her face. No time, spy master. There's a mob forming outside, and I think it's about to turn violent. Uh, a violent mob? How violent? Somewhere between angrily waving torches and pitchforks about and putting the queen on a block and chopping her head off, I reckon. Your marshal leads you down winding staircases to a secret exit where your husband is waiting for you. Blood and stars, I hope we'll be all right. You put your hand on his shoulder and squeeze, starting to mutter your best words of encouragement, but you're interrupted. Through the palace windows, you see a pack of city folk pelting tomatoes at your beleaguered watchman. This way, your majesties. After entering a dark time... <laughs> I really was just homies with my husband in this run, you know? Gl with Gloria, it was true love. And with this guy, it was, well, I need a kid. So, uh, you know, you can just hang out and do weird sciencey shit and I'll be a werewolf. And uh, <laughs> after entering a dark tunnel, you realize before long that your marshal is leading you through the catacombs that crisscross the underbelly of the city. When you emerge from the darkness, you're far from the palace next to an old canal. Now what? Not to worry, your highness will meet with the loyalist armies and crush these peasants before they get out of control. It's the queen! You pick up the pace. A horde of peasants are soon chasing you down the streets, calling for blood. As you round a corner, a familiar figure is waiting, flanked by a dozen inquisitors in blood red hooded robes. Greetings, sinner! Stand your ground and fight. Your marshal looks at you uncertainly, your highness. We cannot hope to fight them alone. Listen to your marshal, Duger. I'm aware, just eat them. I'm gonna die anyway. <laughs> yeah, mask off, come on. I'm a monster, let's go. <laughs> yeah, where's Eat the Inquisitor, exactly. It's not nighttime, I guess. I don't have control all over, the control all over this. All right, uh. My authority and my stability are bad. Let's run. First she has a chance to get closer, you sprint down a side street. After her, a fight breaks out as the marshal tries to cover your retreat, but she's quickly cut down. No! You're transfixed by what's going on behind you. You don't see Joby93 until you've run right into them. Steady, your highness. Where do you think you're going? Moonlight flashes on the dagger in their hand, suddenly blood flowing out of a deep wound in your side. I'll see you in hell! The grandee is silent. You see a smile cross their lips as you collapse to the ground. You come to as inquisitors lift you up the cobblestones. Joby93 is nowhere to be seen. Moments later, you're being paraded through town as peasants hurl rotten fruit and bricks from their windows. By the time you get to Archer's Market, a crowd is gathered and a pyre erected. Shouts of heretic, monster, and sinner are tossed around like a pigskin ball. As you're hoisted onto the stake, you notice a crowd of grandees watching from the corner of the square. You're found guilty of high crimes against the ninth god and his followers, including blasphemy, apostasy, profanity, and treason. Do you have any last words? I'll haunt you all. The crowd gasps and hisses. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be afraid of your imagined power when you're gone, a small solace. The flames grow higher and higher and you're engulfed. Your reign ends in ash. The grandees won, dude. Can't believe this fiery spectacular fate of queen duger passed into legend an enduring lesson in the power of the ninth church the chiefs led by plasma phoenix launched a rebellion that accomplished nothing besides distracting the queen while cunning schemers took the throne rushing to complete the scheme the counts attempted their blood ritual too early the summoned demon escaped their control and slaughtered dozens the Inquisition's bonfires blazed in every street of the kingdom with heretics and dissenting voices disposed of. The grandees crowned Torcada to rule over the ashes. The other nobles did not dare protest. Queen Duker the Toasty! Poor Vostok. You know, I hope Vostok got to just chill and have a good life. <laughs> the wealthiest noble was Moose Cow. And our poorest noble was Matt is tired. And this is what our kingdom looks like at the end. We 
he burned his ass. Don't say that, <laughs> my boy. Yeah. I think the blues would have won if they didn't rebel. That's like, that's so interesting. There's so many interesting like elements to this game. To th Once you've played it a couple times, you know, there's like stuff to, you realize the, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? The like benefits and deficits of choices that you make, you know? Because I think, what happens if you continue now? If I continue now, I play as uh, Torcada, who is the one that the the um, the grandees put in charge. Yeah, everybody could have could have uh, won that. A demon would have been better. Yeah, I wish. I wish that. Uh, I wish the counts finally got to see their demon happen without it going rogue and killing a bunch of people. But you know, one of these days, we cannot do another. I've only got a couple minutes before I have to go tonight. How does the king or queen win? You. So everybody has their own goals. Um, do you remember? Was it yesterday? No, it wasn't yesterday. Saturday, I was like, something's happening here. Something's happening. I feel it on the wind. I was correct. Come here. Um, what was, what were we talking about? Oh, everybody has their own goals in this game. So um, you guys as regions have goals and the monarch also has goals. So at the start of the game, you say like, this is what I want to do. This is, this is, you know, my greatest wish as the monarch, the game says you have to, you have to have an heir of some kind. You can adopt them. You can have them. You can decide that a distant relative is the heir, whatever. Um, but you have to have one. And then, um, you also, at the very start of the game, uh, or at the very start of your run, you say, like, I want to be a peacekeeper, is what I said the first time. I want to be a peacekeeper, so I want our stability to be really high. Um, I want this this last run that we just did, I said I wanted our, our farming to be really high. I want us to have really good, like, like farming infrastructure, right? Here you go, bud. A seven. Not great, but that's okay. Shall I roll for humans? A three. Neither of us are doing great today, but that's okay. And not every day can be amazing, you know? <clears throat> but yeah, the uh, we had a dev in chat who was saying that um, they've gotten lots of feedback that is similar to our what our feedback was, which is like people want to very more easily be able to tell what region they're part of when they join um to remind themselves of what their goals are all of those sorts of things it would be nice for people to be able to check that stuff on their own uh and and they said that they've gotten that feedback a lot so that's stuff that they're working on right now and they're hoping to like have new additions to the game um really soon so we should definitely revisit it because i think it's really fun in one end, you ran away with your wife, so that's kind of a win. You know what? I agree. I think our first ending, where I was like, wife, let's run away together with our child, Duger the second, and she was like, hell yeah, bitch. That was great. <laughs> that was a great ending. <laughs> what are you doing? Hi, Peeper. What's happening? You okay?
Come here. Come here. Okay. <laughs> Put a little hair in there. Bye. Love you. Did the kingdom survive? Here. Well, I know we only have a few minutes, but we'll still change this to coffee time. We've got Hellions tonight. If you want to watch a time loop D&D game. Um, that's what I'm in tonight. Yeah, I got burned at the stake. The, the uh, yellow region one. But as I was burning, I told all of them I would haunt them. So I got the last laugh in both uh, situations, I feel like. <laughs> and that's true. I also was a werewolf. And <laughs> I was a werewolf. And when given the opportunity to decide if I like felt bad about it or not, I was like, no, I don't feel bad <laughs> about it. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't. Would this game work at all as a single player or as a non-streamer? So it is intended to be multiplayer. I think it, you do have to be able to... It can't just be you on your own, I don't believe. Um, but it offers you the option to either play it on Twitch with your chat or to play it with your friends kind of Jackbox style. So one person would be the monarch and then you would have friends... Um, log in on browser that you don't have to use a stream. Uh, there's like a browser version uh, that they can log into and then participate in the game that way as your nobles. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think that there's a way to play it single player. You have to have a minimum of four people. Right, because there has to be one noble per region, right? So there's the monarch, and then you choose three regions at the start. So you would need a person to represent each region. Hmm. I would love to play this game with some of my friends and see what that's like. Yeah, Reigns is pretty fun. Reigns is a similar idea, for sure. And super weird. Voting would be really interesting with only four people, for sure. Maybe I'll try and get a group together. It's like I'm just scratching stuff, you know. Nice hoodie, thank you. It's very comfy. I had to take my earrings off because of my headphones. Oh my God, our, um, so our washing machine still doesn't work, right? So we've still been going to the laundromat, had not been to the laundromat in a while, just kind of like let stuff build up to the point where now it's like, um, and uh, yesterday I was like, we need to go through all of our laundry and sort it so that we can say like, this is the high priority stuff, right? Because it's going to take more than one run to wash all this. So this, we have to determine like, what's the high priority stuff? What's the lower priority stuff? And that way, you know, um, we can figure it all out. So we grabbed everything and we sorted everything into piles and put them into into like our fabric bags, our laundry bags. And then I kept walking around and Sam was like, we got it all, honey. Stop, stop looking around for more laundry. We found it all. And I went into our guest room 
and forgot that Clark went through this weird phase where she only wanted to sleep in the guest room and there was a huge pile of laundry in the guest room. And I was like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> but we found it all. We got, we got it all. I've been looking into, did I talk about this already? I definitely have. I've been looking into um, capsule wardrobes, which is basically like, uh, you only have like one or two of everything is, is kind of the idea. Like if you, uh, and you can have it be seasonal, right? Like you can have your, your winter capsule wardrobe and your summer capsule wardrobe and whatever, but it's, it's basically like, what are the things that you wear all the time? Keep those things. And then everything else just like, don't bother with it anymore. Um, and I'm, I, I find the idea really appealing if, if we had a working washing machine, because it feels like if, if you do the capsule wardrobe thing, then, um, you're having to do laundry way more often, you know, have you talked about the kitty lock you failed to unlock? No, but I will say that the number of people who messaged me being like, Here's a basic math problem. Can you do it? Can eat my entire asshole. That shit got old so fast. I've said before, it's not entirely their fault. I get that it was all like good natured, like like jabs. But um, uh, I've said before that like one of my big, like I'll, I get so overly irritated about situations where I'm made to feel stupid. Um, and so Sam and I goofing about it at the table is very different from like a hundred plus people being like, Dodger, you can't do basic math. That's emb I'm embarrassed for you. Right. Like <laughs> that was not fun for me. I hated that. So I went to Sam and I was like, I hate that you tweeted this. <laughs> like, like that's, that was really shitty. <laughs> and he was like, sorry. <laughs> um, so Yeah. Uh, for anybody who missed it, my my lovely husband tweeted about it, but uh, <laughs> we um, I was I was trying to do something on a game that I have on my phone for Clark, uh, and it asked a lot of parent locks will be math questions, so it was like have a parent answer this math question to approve this thing, right? And I wasn't really I was talking with Sam and I wasn't paying super close attention, and so I hit. I saw a math equation and I hit the number and it was like, that's wrong. And I was like, oh. And I saw another one and I hit a number and it was like, that's wrong. And I was like, fuck, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> and then saw another one, hit another number and it was like, you failed this three times. <laughs> I was like, fuck my life. So I was like, Sam, I need you to not judge me. I just failed like basic multiplication questions three times in a row. And then once it like unlocked again and, and let us do it again, I just handed it to him because I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I obviously can't be trusted with this. Uh, so yeah, as like a, as like a goof amongst my family. Sure. It was, it was funny, but uh, I don't think Sam realized that so many people were going to be like, wow, Dodger at a perfect ex example of the American education system, right? Like, fuck off, guys. <laughs> I'm not good at, at mental math. No, I'm not. And I don't need to be. I carry around a calculator just like everybody else. So it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no we're not in a new place i was um sam showed his competence with batwoman detective work i'm guessing that's sarcastic so uh i was sitting like this and now i sit like this it's the same room at least you can work a sink this is <laughs> this is not an opening to start bashing sam guys <laughs> nobody in this house needs to get bashed
Ah, at least both of you are cute. Thank you. I like him. <clears throat> Sam the Dev from King of the Castle here. I'm sorry I missed the feedback sesh, but I'll watch on VOD. Oh, no, it was it was mostly what we were saying before that, like, um, it sounds like you guys have gotten a lot of feedback that is exactly what our feedback was here, which is, like, people as individuals get really invested in the game even without the extra information. So if they were able to easily see which region they're part of, what their goals are, like, all of those sorts of things, if those things were easily accessible for people... Um, uh, even on my end, if I was able to bring that stuff up easily, it would, it would, it would be a game changer. Um, but people love the game anyway. So that, that sort of stuff would just like bump it white right up, you know? <clears throat> as <laughs> right up, as far as, uh, I'm aware and tributary Sam, feel free to to um, say if this is incorrect, but I was sent a, an influencer copy, quote, end quote. Um, basically, it's basically like an opportunity for me to play the game ahead of time and test out the Twitch integration before they like officially release the game. Um, the game is being released in January, uh, but I don't know like how many people were, were given codes or how many people are playing it. But uh, another thing that I was saying was I, I would be really curious to see what this game is like with just friends using the browser. I definitely want to see what that's like. We were all super invested. More clarity on chat's roles, funds, and goals. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely check it out again after you guys update it and see see what's going on. <laughs> the next update is out in a matter of days and it'll solve the what's my goal thing entirely. Great. <laughs> These little buggies in this house are killing me. We cleaned we cleaned so much in this house yesterday because I was so sick of these little buggies showing up. And I know I have to just like wait for them to die now, but it's so obnoxious to still see them. <laughs> like, aren't you done? There's nothing here for you. <laughs> we have little like fruit flies little drain flies that are that have just popped up in random areas of the house and it's annoying <laughs> you could stick your chickens on them i know i was saying to sam uh i saw somebody who was like hey uh if sometimes you wind up with a bunch of fruit flies because you accidentally left something out um, you should get, uh, carnivorous plants. And I was like, I would love that. <laughs> I would love to have some carnivorous plants in this house. You know who would love that? My kid. My kid would love to have carnivorous plants. She would lose her mind. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And also, sorry for spider talk. Heads up for spider talk. Um, I went looking to see how expensive it is to uh, get a little a little container and set up a little space for um, a jumping spider. They're so cute. They're so cute, dude. And I now I now have like five different places that are UK based that I can go to look for spiders when they go on sale. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. 
They're so cute. Yeah, it depends on where you live, what carnivorous plants will like do well where you are. Um, but yeah. Jumping spider, they're so cute. They do little dances. They're really inquisitive. They like, they're really curious about like the humans in the house. I love them. What you doing, buddy? We have to say goodbye. Because our Clarkie's going to be home soon, isn't she? And then we're all going to have some family time, huh? And then I'm going to play D&D. &D. Should we say bye-bye? What do you think? I know. He's sad. My Sherlock's such a star. He's just a handsome man. He's a very handsome cat. And he's getting old, so he's like, he's starting to get these like little bits of white in there, you know? Don't, hey. Not like this. <laughs> please don't start batting at my AirPods. Please, please. Okay. His tail's gone crazy. He's so mad. Here you go. Eat. <sighs> Okie dokie. Artichokey. <clears throat> we already have a raid leader. That's great. Let's see if they're still streaming. Fantastic. Doing some mini painting. Absolutely. Okay. Let's read this off. And then I'll send you over there. Again, uh, I'm playing D&D &D tonight. It's on a channel called Going Crit RPG. Um, it's with a bunch of my art friends, including Nictor Horse, who some of you might recognize. Um, they come into chat and say hi a lot. Uh, but it's a time loop game. We're all we're all like teens at adventure school and we're stuck in a time loop and we're trying to figure out what's going on. It's been getting very intense and very cool. So uh, if you'd like to swing by and see that, that would be amazing. Let's see here. How far back do we got to go? Beep, beep. Three days, too far. Irish Geezer, thank you for the 77 months. Jupiter Knox for the 23, Obi for the 53, Anya for the 33, Mr. Eggman for the 2, Sykes McKenzie for the 38, Diora Knight for the 1 year. Happy anniversary. A singular dab for you for the 12 months. Thank you so much. Kira Rita for the 40, Gleam Eyes for the 69, Ugh. Plasma Phoenix for the 56, SSJ2 Rich for the 81, Marlus for the 3 years. Happy anniversary. 1, 2, 3. Thank you so much for the three years with us. Will Cubed, thank you for the 73. Starfleet Skater for the 33. Honiest of Vs. I don't think that's right, but <laughs> thank you for the six months. Reikia for the 91. Rockhead Rumple for the 63. Wizarino for the 26. Jimmy for the gifted sub. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Tomlinson for the 99. Almost at 100, dude. TCW Chris for the 76. Liffy for the 34. Evil Crash for the 91. Half Pint Hydra for the 59. Arbiter Fox for the 9. Happy Twitch Baby. Beatrice for the 62. It's Twippin for the 89. Um, Tarnished Valor for the 19. Dread of Colin. Thank you very much for subscribing. Welcome to the Cat Gang. Thank you, thank you. Make some time for the 76. Curly for the 67. Joby for the two years. Happy anniversary, one, two. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Anglovale for the 40. Flint Whitelock for the four years. Happy anniversary. One, two, three, four. Thank you, thank you. Um, Mist and Chocolate for the 74. Twig Bot for the 16. Court and Justice for the Gifted Sub. Knit Nutter for the 16. Doji Day for the 33. Patience for the 25. And Tianmar for the 71. Thank you, thank you, everybody. We're going to go raid Count Bug, who's doing some mini painting. Go say hi. Spread love, spread joy. I will see you guys at Hellions if you are looking for something to watch later. Or um, I will be streaming um, same Duger time, same Duger channel tomorrow. Okay? Take care of yourselves, guys. I'm also going to put up a schedule in a bit here. 
I promise. Okay, bye.